So I don't know if six is coming on or not. Google <laughs> said she was. Recoil can't make it because he's got to go to sleep because he's got to get up early in the morning for work because that's how working people work. Um, Dad, you're not I, recording. Recoil, fuck that guy. Okay. No, I'm not recording <laughs> this at all. Um, and, and I love you, Recoil. I'm very, very sorry. And every, <laughs> not everybody, not at all. Everybody else that I hit up to come on tonight has not said anything, so I guess we are the only four minus Google and perhaps six. I still want sex to include sounds like your USB drive going inside and pulling out. Like, could you imagine that? No, because I'm not quite as warped as you yet. Well, I mean, think about it. A I've USB never thought about that. I guess I'll have to now. Well, think about it. A USB drive, when you stick it in your computer, it goes. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now think about the penis going inside. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> it and doesn't go. Did it? It kind of makes a <laughs> noise. That's what I'm saying. I want it to sound like computers. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. It'll make it interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, we got just uh, under a minute, and I am muting out. Okay. Me too. Hit us up on... That wasn't supposed to happen, sorry. Please remember, the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Uh-oh, I pushed the red off. It's in a bag of Seaman Trucking will pack your shit for you. Go down to Pound Town, into Pound Town. Dysfunctional. I see Janet Reno in a pink bunny suit repelling out of a helicopter with an AR-15, and I'm like, this is fucking fantastic. It puts the lotion in the basket. We are extra disgruntled tonight. I like the feeling between my butt cheeks. I have to walk around the store with a mug, and people are like, oh, what are you doing? Drinking coffee? Like, no, I'm promoting DB. I can use the promo code Marquee and get 0% off. Ah, <laughs> oh, hey, DB, you want to see how smart you are? Click on my ring. Mm, yes. Get a little bit of foreskin in with that. He does talk a lot about his grandma's titties. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's probably heard a lot worse uh, out of me. I didn't see a box from Tasteful Treasures. Oh, jeez. Syrup up my mouth a little. That reminds me of a marine joke. We'll talk quietly amongst ourselves. Good thing we didn't say you better tune in. This is one for the record books. You don't want to miss it. It's time, 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 time to get swinging at the barracks party. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Gold Star families, everyone, we gather here today with a shared attitude of gratitude. Today is the day we put aside to remember fallen heroes and to pray that no heroes will ever have to die for us again. It's a day of thanks for the valor of others. A day to remember the splendor of America. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old, Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. I was thinking this morning that across the country, children and their parents will be going to the town parade, and the young ones will sit on the sidewalks and wave their flags as the band goes by. Later, maybe they'll have a cookout or a day at the beach, and that's good. Because today is a day to be with the family and to remember. Holmes said, those who serve in our military have hearts that are touched with fire. Having known great things, he said, they are content with silence. Audie Murphy of the Wild Wild Courage. Or what else would you call it when a man bounds to the top of a disabled tank, stops an enemy advance, saves lives and rallies his men and all of it single-handedly? When he radioed for artillery support, and was asked how close the enemy was to his position, he said, wait a minute and I'll let you speak to him. The statue of the three servicemen, the three fighting boys of Vietnam, it too has majesty 
and more. Perhaps you've seen it. Three rough boys walking together, looking ahead with a steady gaze. There's something wounded about them. A kind of resigned toughness, but there's an unexpected tenderness, too. At first, you don't really notice, but then you see it. The three are touching each other, as if they're supporting each other. They learn not to rely on us. They learn to rely on each other. And they were special in another way. They chose to be faithful. They chose to reject the fashionable skepticism of their time. They chose to believe and answer the call of duty. Sleep, soldiers, still in honored rest, your truth and valor wearing. The bravest are the tenderest, the loving are the daring. Thank all of you and God bless you and have a day full of memories. Yes, this is the Memorial Day Barracks Party. This is DVRadio.net, WDVR. I'm Bonerwood. We've got Oink, PTS Dog, Joaquin Wata, and we've got Nevermore. How is everyone doing this May 27th, 2019? I have bacon. America, freedom, yes! Sorry. I am bacon, so, no. Uh, <laughs> we're doing good, brother. Nice. Doing well. Who wants to bite Oink now? There will be no cannibalism <laughs> on this show. Okay. No cannibalism tonight. All right. Can't have that. <laughs> Cannot have that. Well, my cork just popped, and I am now having to go find other stuff. Anyway, so how was everybody's day? Quiet and peaceful, the way it should be. Not too bad. Spent it with the outlaw. I mean, the in-laws, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too bad. Except for the uh, okay. construction kept season. Quiet. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it Even was... Uh, I don't think we should be, you know, forbidden to bite Oink, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have showered this month. It is... Well, oh, wait a minute. Yep, it, it was last week. Yep, we're good. No, it was last That's week. That's your, your, your quarterly spring shower. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so we are doing uh, our annual... Uh, this is our third annual, might I add, Memorial Day. If you want to call it a tribute, call it a tribute, but it's our way of, quote-unquote, celebrating. Uh, we all have our ways of celebrating things. Um, if you want to call it an, an observance day, that's what it is. We're observing Memorial Day. Uh, we try not to get it too uh, too dark. Um, we try to stay away from that. But at the same time, we uh, know that there are people out there that might have their moments. So if you need anything... Hit up DB on the Facebook page or, or, or the barracks or uh, Battle in Distress, all right? So, how was your weekends? That's that's my next question. That's what I was going to go for. Anybody can answer now. <laughs> Quiet, calm. I'm still healing, so I can't get up into much trouble right now. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of grounded, hard grounded, actually. <laughs> Well, what about you, um, Nevermore? Well, you know, we had that discussion on um, DV Radio, Barracks Talk, Saturday night. You know, every year is different. This weekend, unlike the past couple of years, you know, it's been, I've been okay, been not. But this weekend, it kind of hit me, so I've just been kind of laying low. Lots of uh, cuddles with the service dog over here who's currently trying to steal my bacon pork chop. Still after it. Not gonna happen. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so, Oink, after uh, you left us Saturday night after the show, how was uh, the rest of your weekend? Uh, pretty uneventful. Pretty uneventful. It was pretty nice, which is you know always a good thing. Like I said, just uh, kind of a weekend to kick back and kind of think about things. But hopefully, nobody got down too down. You know, um, luckily being chair force, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of <laughs> bad things, and bad things happen. So that's that's a positive. But uh, we know there's lots of other people that, uh, you know, this weekend kind of hit some huff, tough. So, uh, you know, we'll just kind of take a moment to sit back and think of them and, and the people they lost, you know. So it's a re- reflecting type of weekend, you know. Right, right. Yeah. I uh, I mentioned Saturday, you know, I've cried this week. One year it hits me harder than it does the next. And it just, it all depends on what's going on around the time. But 
like I said, we all have our ways of mourning and griefing and observing and celebrating and dancing and fucking and um so so yeah, there is that. You know, I, I gotta say, and maybe it's because I got a wing in a cast, so I can't be <laughs> as active as I usually am. But I uh I lost a couple of people who I was worked with or was friends with. Uh um one stupid, it was a senior chief, great guy, really neat guy, and he was stationed in DC. And he got hit by a car riding his bike in the fog on a Sunday morning. Somebody ran a stop a stop sign and killed him. Wow. And it's senseless, stupid stuff like that. And I'm like, man, you know, um even even that little just senseless stuff that could happen to anybody at any time. You know, it, it hits harder and it means more when it was somebody you served with. Yeah. Well, it's, I don't know if uh, anybody's been here. Um, I know you guys, I'm talking about the listeners. I don't know how many listeners were here. Um, I believe it was last year. I uh, played sitting at a bar. And um, like JJ just said, I lost a really, really close friend the same year we got back from Iraq. It wasn't even a full year. Uh, the last time I seen him was at a drill, my last drill, oddly enough, coincidentally enough. And uh, about a month later, right before our best friend's birthday, he died from pneumonia. It's like, really? <laughs> and And the guy was young. He was like 32 at the time. So it's like, you know, I mean, he was like my older brother and everything, and it, yeah, it's just, love you, Ken, um, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's stupid just stupid stuff. Sometimes that that stark reality that you're just not even promised tomorrow. You know, you could get up out of bed, trip on a, a crayon that you dropped on the floor while you were munching your midnight snack, crack your head on the side of the dresser and die first thing in the morning. Yep. You know, I mean, it, it just. And some t some days, it's just more right there in front of you than others. Yep, yep. Sorry, exactly. I'm not trying to bring things down. I'm just no. saying you know, this year for some reason, no, it's no, just bigger to me this year. You're completely right. I mean, it's it's like I tried to. I didn't want to go into too much detail Saturday because you know we try not to bring anybody down on Saturday nights, obviously. Yeah. But you're exactly right. You know, everything is is never guaranteed life is especially and um it's like i said it's one of those years that it hit me like a fucking ton of bricks friday and i was like really you know so uh, well, i think it just goes it just goes to prove too that you know the the, the term families use you know widely uh, in the military community because the guys and gals that you serve with is a family you know it's something that uh yep. none of us should take for granted and, and yeah. we don't. I don't. I don't think any of us do. You know, here personally, or even when you see somebody out reaching out on the page, you just, you know, that's that community, that family tightness that we all have and shared. That uh, you know, it's kind of special. Yeah, I can honestly sit here and say, you three, DB6, Recoil, Google, I can honestly say that you're family. I mean, we're not blood related by any means. I'm sure if you go back far enough, we probably are, but. <laughs> we are family. I mean, I fucking love you guys to death. I probably get mushy at times when I tell you guys that, but it's true. I mean, yeah, I just had a, a phone conversation with Recoil because he couldn't come on tonight, and we, we just shot the shit. And I was like, every time before I hang up with him, I always tell him I love him. Do the same with Nevermore. Try to do the same with Oink and, and, and Joaquin over here, but they like to do the no homo stuff. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's what you get when you have a Chair Force and Naval dude on, on the series. But... It happens. Hey, it's um, not gay if you say no homo. Well, Try. I mean, the lights weren't off either, and my eyes were open, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Look, as long as you're not making eye contact, you're safe. <laughs> well, well, speaking of Memorial Day and, and all that, myself, Nevermore and Oink, uh, spoke Saturday about what Memorial Day means to us. Do you want to tell uh, our listeners and us? Joaquin, what it means to you. I mean, we know the definition. We know what it is. We know the observance day is obviously to remember those that have fallen or died during service. But what is Memorial Day to you? Well, it's just that um, 
something I, I do every year since I started the PTS dog page. There's one post I have to make no matter what it goes on uh, the page and I'll share it. Uh, I will share it with you by reading it to you. It's the uh, poem in Flanders Fields, which was written after dur dur either during or right after World War I by a uh, British uh, major named, um, hang on, I'm trying, I can't remember his name, I'm blocking. It's fun to block stuff. Right. It's so much fun, thanks. Thanks, PTSD, thank you, brain. John McRae. Um, and it really is touching being written after what they at the time thought was the most terrible war ever uh, until the next one, of course. Um, but it's touching. And, and I think it's a, a great remembrance. And that's what Memorial Day is. It's a remembrance. We remember mm -hmm. whether we were touched personally by the loss of a, of a uh, fellow uh, or not. Uh, fellow service member or not, um, it's a day to, to think about those who've gone before. Um, so again, this is by John McRae, uh, Major John McRae. It's called In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And I just, that's why people wear poppies. It's a British and Canadian tradition. Um, but that's why people wear poppies on uh, Memorial Day. Um, is uh, that poem right there. And so that's yeah. what it means to me. It means remembering. Yep, and I actually seen a, I forget what game I was watching. I think it was a Boston Red Sox uh, game that was on TV, and they actually had the poppies on their uniforms today. So mm -hmm. that, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's where the poppies go. And, and there, you know, there's a veteran uh, service dog handler I follow who goes and, and uh, hands out poppies every year. Uh, leading up to Memorial Day, which I think is just cool as can be. He goes to like the Walmart and sits outside of the table and gives people's poppies, poppies for Memorial Day. Yeah. Um, um, and, there, you know, there's a lot of, it's just, it's a great symbol. The Canadians, when, when I was at NORAD US Northcom, we had, of course, the Canadian contingent as part of uh, NORAD. And uh, they all wore poppies um, starting two weeks before Memorial Day. And... Um, that's where I first learned about the tra tradition because I'd never seen it before and uh, had a major um, who explained it to me. And I was like, that is, that's pretty damn cool. That's well, really neat. You know, speaking of Flanders fields that I am <laughs> definitely fucking butchering because I don't have teeth anymore at the current moment because that's how my life works. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Blah, 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 blah. Watch me not have got it on here and i know i have it holy shit <laughs> do you good <laughs> is it which one was it joaquin big head todd and the monsters i'm trying to find it and i can't find it. Walt flanders fields i know i've got it god <laughs> damn it some beach Motherfucker. <laughs> god damn it stupid what spotify <laughs> Well, I pulled all these songs over the weekend, and now I can't find the goddamn song. Like, holy shit. Anyway. Nice job, loser. Oh, there it is. Right there it is. It's right in front of me. It's literally. Oh, it's the first the... one on the list, damn it. <laughs> I know. It's literally right there on the fucking. Holy shit. I'm losing my fucking mind. Holy fucking Christ. Stick with us, people. I'm okay. It's all right. Holy fucking Christ. Jesus Christ. Fuck, fuck, and this fuck, is DB Live. Fuck a buck. <laughs> Holy fucking Christ. All right. So we're going to go to a two-song break. We're going to come back. We'll discuss a few more things. We're going to try not to get as deep as Joaquin did. We'll try not Sorry. to get that deep. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's you okay. You asked, fucker. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect to go that deep, okay? Um, let's see. We'll come back. Like I said, we'll try to upbeat it. 
just a little bit. We're not going to, you know, get any strippers up in here. Certainly. Just beat it, beat it. <laughs> right. But we will do that. We'll come back. And uh, on the other side, we'll figure out what we're going to do because I don't know if Ron Ripley's coming in. He wants to come in. DB6 might come in. I don't know if Google's coming or not. Uh, but you're listening to the Memorial Day Barracks Party right here on WDBR, DBRadio.net. DB Radio. Are you looking for veteran resources and peer support? Objective Zero has an app for that. Download the Objective Zero app for free from the App Store or Google Play. Access wellness resources like yoga and a free year subscription to Headspace, the world's most popular meditation app. Check out veterans resources and access our nationwide network of peer support. Speak to fellow women veterans or someone in your field and branch of service. You get to choose who you want to chat with. Learn more at www.objectivezero.org. That's www.objectivezero.org. All right, Ron, let's start from the top like we rehearsed, and we'll go from there. I'm Ron Ripley. I'm Ron Ripley. I'm Ron Ripley. Ron Ripley. Ron wait, 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 wait. Ripley. Ron Ripley. Okay. Ron Ripley. Ron Ripley. Ron. Let's roll again. Ripley. Take 16. The man, the myth, Ron Ripley. Ron Ripley, honorable discharge for DV Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ron Ripley. I am the host of Honorable Discharge. Tune in each week as I interview new guests, new veterans, slutty veterans, sexy veterans, talking about their times, shooting the shit, smoking and joking, having a good time. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ron Ripley. You're going to find us at Honorable Discharge, the podcast, only on DV Radio. Radio. You're listening to WDVR only on DDDDDDRadio.net. That's right, you're listening to WDVRDVRadio.net. This is the Memorial Day Barracks Party right here on May 27th, 2019. I'm Bonerwood. As I said when I introduced everybody at the beginning, we have Oink. PTS Dog, Joaquin Latai, and Nevermore. Hopefully we will have Google and uh, Six later on. If not, that's okay. I am going to get Ron Ripley in here very soon. How are you guys doing after that break? My, my neighbor, my like 78-year-old neighbor, it's almost dark, and he's out on his mower mowing his lawn. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. And, and there's Ron. Speak of the devil, I didn't know he was coming in right now. How you doing, Ron? Oh, shit, do you have me? Uh, yeah, shit, we do. <laughs> ah, what's up, boys? How the hell are you? Hey. Doing. <laughs> Don't boys and ladies, either. boys and ladies, boys, gentlemen. <laughs> Use that term loosely, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't. Said. I don't assume how any of you identify, but how the fuck are you doing? How, how's it going? We're doing great. Um, try not to move your phone around too much. I know you're in a hotel room, and it's great and all, but... <laughs> Cool. I'll put it. I'll put it on a tripod. Uh, you know, whatever makes it easy for you guys. That's good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is Ron Ripley. He's got an exclusive show that's coming very, very soon called Honorable Discharge. How you doing tonight, brother? Dude, I'm doing fantastic. It's uh, it's really great to connect with you guys again. Uh, dude, it's been a fucking minute and a half, has it not? Oh, I've been I've been busy, man. I've been doing uh, school stuff, you know. When you know, because I'm using the GI Bill to go to school. So when I go to school, I don't mess with too much else, you know. I gotta I gotta get the good grades and make Iraq worth going there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you did <laughs> sort of, kind of shoot your load there, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine, like, dude? I went to Iraq twice, man, to get these GI Bill benefits and to, you know, go out till three in the morning to tell dick jokes and then screw up a midterm. It's just not worth it, you know. But you know, <laughs> see, you know, I, these are the decisions you got to make, you know, battlefield decisions. Am I the only one that's curious what a comedian's SAT looks like? Like, is it just a big 
you know, answer sheet bubbled with dicks, or is it like... <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. You know those bubble sheets you fill out, the A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. If I don't know, like, if I don't know what's going on, I'll just try to make a bubble dick drawing. <laughs> a bubble and, dick you know, drawing. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, in my GPA is 3.5. Who knew? You know. <laughs> oh wow! Wow! It's all about the penises. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's all that all common core them. education coming out. They just they just write all the tests so that it draws dicks. <laughs> well, so so what are you what are you all talking about? Who do you got? Who's on air? Who am I saying hi to? Give me well, give me, give me the lowdown. Well, this is the Memorial Day barracks party, and we have uh, Nevermore, Joaquin Wata, also known as the PTS dog, and we have Oink. Joaquin. And, and, How's it uh, going, Ron? Yeah. We don't have DB6 or Google to recoil. Uh, I guess they're all slacking on me tonight because, you know, they like Bo doing it all. <laughs> hey, man, you know, Memorial, it's your Memorial Day, too. So, I mean, if you want to do some heroin, don't, you know, just go. Just do it. Don't, you don't have to ask me. It's, I'm not your dad. Well, I couldn't find a stripper's ass that was available, so couldn't snort no. anything off of it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You're in high demand this time of year. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, so, so what do you guys? There's, what do you guys a, do there's a line to do lines on the strip. <laughs> <laughs> well, so is this episode like uh, like you're you're uh, doing a you know like a, a shout out and a memorial to all those fallen drones or like what? <laughs> well, well, honestly, every year uh, it's our third annual actually Memorial Day tribute observance uh, celebration, whatever you want to call it, and uh, we like to get anybody in here that we can to. Give us their thoughts on what Memorial Day is to them. Uh, if they want to do a shout out to someone uh, that's passed uh, that they found, you know, inspiring or that meant a lot to them, that's always open and on the table. Anything that you'd like to talk about, it's now the time, Mr. Ron Ripley. Oh, man. All right. So first and foremost, I do. I want to give a shout out to all the fallen drones during the Obama administration um they really killed it and they're not with us anymore so good for them uh, uh you know little little, little I'll wait hold on we'll pouring one out for all the fallen drones that's good so um not a lot of people i mean we can talk about d-day you can talk about pearl harbor but let's talk about the drones no i'm kidding um shout outs <laughs> who do i want to give shout outs to well dv6 uh lick my log cutter uh lick your log cutter and who else who else <laughs> no, uh, I mean it's been a good week. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I'm 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 in California. I've got a very jaded view of the world. Like, it's pretty slutty out here. My, uh, you know, these yeah. the the daily strifes and uh, worries of the world they don't concern me. I'm out here. I mean, Grumpy Cat died the other day, so I mean, I'm pretty fucked up about that. Uh, but you know, other than that, things are good. It's a good Memorial Day. It's a good day to get on that barbecue. Right. What are you well, guys doing? Are you, are you guys hanging out with family? What are you What are you doing, dude? I'm always hanging out with the family. I'm in the living room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys barbecuing? You guys eating it? You know, like what's uh, cooking up some some dog as is tradition in America or what? What's up? Well, that that's what I was going to ask. Nevermore and Joaquin, did you guys cook up a dog for the pork chop or? Dude, I'll bet you Joaquin well, can cook up a fucking dog. I'll bet you it's delicious. Grilled some. Uh... Bacon wrapped pork, bacon wrapped pork chops, because motherfucking America. Oh, I like that. I like Smoked that. over applewood. <laughs> um, on a on a serious note, though, you do have a show that's exclusively right here on DB Radio. Do you want to let our listeners know a what it's about, and b do you want it uh, going to podcast with us? What's your plans with uh, Honorable Discharge? Let the people know, because like I said, it's right, coming so, in a few weeks. So Honorable Discharge is a show about uh, cooking, specifically salmon. Any veteran that's got an amazing salmon recipe, I want you on the podcast. Uh, I made all that up. It's not cooking at all. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much, you know, it's just because we used to have that show, Struggle Brothers. And uh, unfortunately, my co-host had to, had to walk on that project. So I've been waiting to do something for a long time. And, and you were like, dude, just do it yourself. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Um, and so eventually, I, you know, like I, I was doing some school stuff and I started things going. Uh, got you a couple episodes. So the podcast itself, it's called Honorable Discharge. Uh, it's just San Diego veterans hanging out, smoking and joking, shooting the shit, uh, having a cocktail and just uh, meeting each other, really. So the last episode was myself i'm an air force veteran talking with a 60 year old navy veteran 
who is friends with the other guest who's a 26 year old uh, Marine Corps veteran. So we had Army, Navy and Air Force kind of sitting around shooting the shit. And it was great. It's it, I, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you had so this is what you had. You had the dumpster behind a Chinese takeout. You had the Marriott five star, and then you had well a fort made of crowns. Yeah, okay. I mean, and and if and if I could have gotten some Coast Guard, we would have showed them our penis. I mean, boom. I mean, but we just could, there wasn't one laying around. So. Yeah, you'd had it was a chairs really good made episode. <laughs> you you would have had chairs made out of dildos. It's it's obvious. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Uh, we brought you guys up too. I mean, uh, and we're so happy. Like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you guys, but you know, you're still around and we're still connected. And I can just be like, hey, you guys want some episodes? Because I'm talking with veterans, and uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fantastic show. I've actually been a little bit worried, uh, just wondering like what your what your censorship content will be like because it's really just you know like the only thing we don't do is hate speech. I mean. Any anything else, it's fine. So like you know, I got one guy who's sitting here. He's like a Navy guy, and he's sitting here talking about like, oh, this guy, he's a Marine, and I I call him a homo. Hey, homo is not a bad word. And I'm like, oh my god, my wife is gonna hate this episode. <laughs> and then I'm thinking about like what you guys, I mean, what you guys can play. But I mean, I know you guys are you know very freedom of speech. Yeah. So I just don't want to like alienate listeners because it's it's really interesting to me to have veterans come together from all walks of life from all different backgrounds and be able to sit down and talk about, you know, like, Hey man, this is what I think about like transgender people in the military. Yeah. Like, sure. We make a little bit of a joke about it, but there is like some seriousness in there because it's, it's a very divisive issue. So I don't right. want, like, I don't want like your listeners to be like, Oh my God, this is a California liberal and stuff. Like, no, no, I mean, that's cool if you think that, but I mean, obviously, you know, like they're veterans are all over the world. And so we're right. all going to be, having these different opinions and stuff. And it's really great to be able to come together and talk with strangers, uh, yeah. with other veterans. It, it really is. It's like a smoke pit. Uh, Definitely. Forward deployed area and you're just passing through. Yeah. And, you know, on our show, we do do the homo jokes and the trans jokes. I mean, we do it all the time, but I have trans friends. I have gay friends. I have lesbian friends, whatever you want to call them. Fucking, they yeah, know. They know my humor. Works for me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm, <laughs> but no, but I'm I mean, so, you know, I mean, because first and foremost, it's a comedy podcast. I'm a comedian, right. and uh, you know, like, and so when I can't get it, but this is actually cool because so I have access to celebrity comedians and stuff. Uh, on the rare occasion, I can have them sit down with me. Adam Ray uh, he used to be on Mad TV and he's touring the country now. The last time I saw him, he's like, "Yeah, man, I'll absolutely sit down and do your podcast." How fantastic would it be to have a celebrity comedian sit down with a veteran that they've never met and be able to just be like, oh, shit, you were there and did this. And wow, man, that blows my mind. Tell me about that. It's a celebrity putting a, uh, a, 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 a veteran, you know, in the limelight and saying, you know, tell me about your experience. I think that's a really great opportunity. I don't know who remembers Mad TV or not, but if you don't remember Mad TV, you're probably too young to be listening to this. So fuck off. I mean, um. if you don't remember Mad TV, <laughs> you must have seen Family Guy. Family Guy, Lois Peter Schmidt, you know, Lois Griffin. She's, you know, she was on Mad TV. She was the uh, Mommy Swan. You know, and now she does the voice for Lois Griffin yep. on Family Guy. I mean, you know, Mad TV was, you know, it's not Saturday Night Live, but uh, it's uh, well, it, it was you know, an, it, Mad it TV moment, it was an influential show. Yeah. Mad well, TV Matt, was kind of the natural extension of In Living Color. Yes, and not well, only in, that, it was else. what we yeah. wanted against censorship because they broke a lot of boundaries that TV at the time did not want to break. Well, and that's no. like that's why I love being a comedian. Like I've done a lot of things in my life. I've been in construction. I've been in the service industry, and I realized my world has nothing to do with cubicles. And and comedy <laughs> is a really great world where you can speak about the things that are happening on in our social environment and be able to comment on them and be able to say hey you know what that's a fucking joke you know just just relax yeah uh, i mean tonight in like 20 minutes i gotta I'm, I'm gonna run a joke about guns for a crowd that i've never seen before so hopefully hopefully they don't get triggered <laughs> <laughs> so 
we've got Nevermore, Joaquin Latai, we've got Oink, myself, Wonderwood, and he just popped in for a little bit, Ron Ripley, who is the host of Honorable Discharge, which is coming exclusively, again, to DV Radio, and you can hear it right here on DVRadio.net. Stay tuned for more information as to when it will debut. Um, Nevermore, Joaquin, Oink, do you have any questions for Ron that you'd like to ask other about Honorable Discharge or anything that he's got going on? You mean veterans can sit there and talk to one another about this stuff and not actually fight? What? It's actually, I mean, again, I have never laughed so hard as I did on the last podcast. It was uh, Sean McCon and Dylan Doan. It, uh, when that episode airs, it was, it's hilarious. Normally, I try to keep the episodes at about an hour. Uh, if it's just me and one other person, that was with two guests. So we had about two hours uh, of conversation and it was fantastic. And it really is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm reaching out. I'm going to try to get some female veterans on there. I do not want my podcast to be a sausage fest. How cool <laughs> would it be, you know, if you're, you're a, a female veteran who's in, uh, you know, Florida going, I love, the, I love dysfunctional veterans radio, but geez, a lot of, a lot of cock talk. Uh, I'd like to combat that because there's some, there's some like, outstanding female comedians in San Diego and Los Angeles. Some of them happen to be veterans, uh, and, and, and I'd love to sit down and talk with them, too. I, I really just I just do not want it to be like, you know, like it's cool, I am the host of the show, but I don't want it to be like the Ron Ripley Hour. It's really more about the veterans. It's just about, like, tell me what you're doing. Each episode kind of starts out with basic, you know, the basic premise of the show is, you know, tell me what you did in the military. Uh, tell me what you do as a civilian. Tell me if there's any carryover. What's your favorite dick joke? So in essence, good. in essence, you want to be the Joe Rogan of the veteran podcast community. Well, I mean, Joe, <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to compare me to an ugly, no talent hack like like Joe Rogan, uh, that's fine. I'll I'll butcher you in your sleep the next time I'm in your state. That's fine. That's cool. But I'm really a lot better than Joe Rogan. I mean, easily my cock is way bigger. Like at least so, ten pounds heavier. So before uh, <laughs> Nevermore and Joaquin ask you a question, I did get a question from Snafu in the chat room on dbradio.net slash chat. So those of you who's listening on TuneIn and uh, through the website can go chat there with us. Uh, he's wanting to know: Is the podcast going to be available on iTunes? How are you going to do the podcast? That's a great question. Literally, I'm just I'm I'm recording the episodes in my studio. And then I'm giving you, DV Radio, the files. So uh, it, it all airs first and foremost on DV Radio. That's the first place you're going to be able to hear it. I don't have an iTunes channel or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know if DV Radio has, uh, you know, a, a, an iTunes channel of stock where they can, you know, th this episode will be available <laughs> for long periods of time. I hope so. What Ron is trying to say, in essence, is DB Radio will <laughs> so put it on podcast work. <laughs> if he asks very, very kindly. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, as politely as possible, Boner, get your fucking shit together. Hey, my, sh <laughs> my shit isn't together because I've got Crohn's, goddammit. Talk to the Crohn's, quit, not me. <laughs> quit slacking off. Get Wi-Fi in the shitter so the Crohn's isn't a ah. thing. You know, and then just go and do the episodes, man. Uh, Joaquin, do you have anything you'd like to ask her? <laughs> Joaquin, how are you, man? Fuck, I haven't seen you since the 4th of July last year. Man, yeah. How, how are the pooches? How are the pooches doing? What's going pooches, on? Pooches are doing good. Skeeter's big and ornery, and, and Freya is fucking crazy. Um, And uh, I've got my right arm in a cast. I, I uh, did something stupid and broke the uh, broke the broke tendon in the right arm and had to. Off, did you? No, nah, no, nah, I broke it. I broke it uh, doing a used to could. And uh, so I had to have surgery and get the tendon repaired. So I'm grouchy as fuck because my fucking arm's in a sling. Well, that's cool. You taking any of those pain meds, those constipating nah. pain meds? Nah, I took I took them. I took them the night after surgery. And that's all you need. Uh, that's it. And I was like, nope, done. I take can the rest of those pills, put them right in your uh, bug out kit. I've yep. got a, I've got a <laughs> feeling that Nevermore wants to, you know, put a few cents in on what Joaquin done after the surgery. <laughs> there has not been nothing better than seeing Joaquin come out of a surgery and they didn't put him completely under. They just did the happy juice. So when he wakes up, they immediately come get me so that because he does wake up kind of angry. He come out really freaking happy this time, but we come in there and 
the nurse is trying to get his stats and stuff. And I didn't tell the story Saturday night, but, and he's trying to get Skeeter up in the bed while the nurse has got like the cuff out and is trying to check everything. And I'm, I'm going, Hey, just give him a minute. Just give him a minute. And he's sitting there going, Oh, this Skeeter, just come here. Skeeter, Skeeter, Skeeter. <laughs> kind of a big dog. How hard is it to say that name sympathetic? Come here, Skeeter. <laughs> so we get the big boy up there. Let him love on him for a minute. He's fine. We we determined that everything's good. And he immediately looks at me and goes, I'm hungry as fuck. Like, <laughs> really loud. We're in the recovery area. There's like 20 other patients. And I'm like, shh. You know, here, kids. All- Come here, kids. God damn it. <laughs> they're, not all, they're not all that shh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so this lady that had met Skeeter in the waiting room goes by and tells Skeeter goodbye. And he yells, hey, lady, you got a cheeseburger? And from there, it was cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Nice. Rod, nice. get home. Rod, that was, was a good fucking cheeseburger. <laughs> Rod, before Nevermore <laughs> continues, she sent me a video, and it got to the point that I, in my mind, could think of nothing more than John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd on SNL with cheeseburger, 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 no pickle. Cheeseburger, 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 no Coke, Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, so, that's a good skit, man. I had to stop on the way home after we'd been up since like five, four thirty in the morning and get a cheeseburger. I get him home and he's eating this cheeseburger like it's a porn. <laughs> the, the, I didn't, I don't know if Bo uh, got all of that in the video, but before I started recording, it was so so, like what's funny is it's almost two weeks later and i'm just hearing this part of the story so so what you guys have to understand five hours you were completely (laughs) just stupid there was no getting around it when he goes i think i want to lay down i'm like thank god i can't take anymore but what what a lot of listeners don't know is that when i love something that i'm eating a lot like twinkies I will sit there and go, mm, it's an orgasm in my mouth. And I was waiting so badly for Joaquin to say there's an orgasm in my mouth while you were eating that cheeseburger. Well, we get that the, the, the part that I didn't tell anybody was we get to Burger King. All right. This man tries to order a Baconator. And I'm like, we're not. That's how happy. every Me Too story starts, by the way. <laughs> and I was like, we're not. We're, we're, he goes, well, then. And the speaker's on. He's like, well, then order something with fucking bacon. Okay. <laughs> and I'll have a triple bacon cheeseburger with lots of bacon. She goes, yeah, I kind of got that. And I'm sitting there going, oh. <laughs> you could just put like six six more bacons on the alpha. <laughs> I mean, that's how he was talking. Bacons. And and Ron has met me, both me and PTS Dog up at um, the DV farm, and he's never, ever gotten to hear him not sober because, you know, the DV farm is a sober place. Well, that's not true. I was I was creeping that night and I was recording <laughs> uh, outside of your window. Oh, God. So, I mean, Talker no, alert. I'm not going to release that. That's for me uh, but, and nobody else. But then it gets worse because his hand is numb. Oh, God. And he's got this pair of scissors. <laughs> and he's trying to use his right hand, which is the one that is numb, to cut <laughs> the bands off his left hand. And I'm dying because, again, a porno comes up, and he's like, I can't scissors. <laughs> I, so I pick up my phone, and, of course, Forgot. I investigate it. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on? What's the matter? I can't scissors. The scissors aren't scissoring. <laughs> I'm going. You sober bitch. I'm trying to scissor <laughs> the fuck out of this. I cut this shit <laughs> off my arm. Damn it. Hit record and leave me be. <laughs> but so after we finish the video and we go through the cheeseburger and getting all that off, he looks at me with a dead straight face and he goes, well, now what the fuck? And I said, dude, you really, 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 really need to take you a nap. And he's like, naps are for fucking pussies. <laughs> <laughs> Love I was it. dying. I have never, ever seen him come out of sedation. I'm one of those that come out of sedation crying throwing up i don't do well with it and he said he comes out angry he came out so freaking stupid that Ah. i'm sitting in the waiting room going you know if i record this entire thing live it would be the best thing ever only there's like signs everywhere that says i can't and the nurse they i know they're used to it but bless her heart he literally 
gets a cracker from her and he goes, that's not a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> we, have work, we have to work our way up. Cause you know how it is after surgery. Yeah. You start with ice chips and then you get a cracker and then they add peanut butter to it. And everything that she tried to do to please him to, you know, try to calm him down a little bit. Ice chips. That's not a cheeseburger cracker. Man, this sucks. It's not a cheeseburger. <laughs> added peanut butter on it. Well, this isn't fucking cheeseburger peanut butter. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'll never see. I'm completely opposite. When I come out of sedation for my colonoscopies or anything, I'm groggy and I have to piss. So the first thing I do is like, give me a urinal. Like I got to piss. Right. But the first time I ever had a colonoscopy, the first time I was actually under sedation, I remember this part. Senior prom. Right. I remember <laughs> this part vividly because I was at, uh, uh, I think it was Wake Forest, uh, Baptist hospital in Winston Salem, North Carolina. And I'm sitting there, uh, laying there. Unless they're paying you, no one cares about the fucking name. Go on. Right, <laughs> right. Well, that hospital sucks ass. I just want to warn everybody. Anyway, I'm laying there, and I come out of sedation. My mom's there, and my at the time, my, my ex-wife was there. But um, I'm, I'm laying there, and I hear her call on the phone because they're getting ready to admit me because that was when they diagnosed me with Crohn's. She says, I need a, ro a, a room for a patient who needs to be admitted. And the first thing that comes to mind, and I blurt out straight up, make sure it's a sweet. And she turned so fucking well, red and tried about, not to laugh. Like. You talk about having to go, though. But, you know, after we get, and we're still yelling cheeseburger during all of this. This went on, you know, they keep you for about an hour to make sure you're the, that your blood pressure's stable and all of that good stuff. Out of the blue, as loud as fucking possible. And again, there are children and people going by and i'm sitting there he yells i gotta piss and i'm like <laughs> so the nurse hands him a urinal and he does his thing and you know the nurse steps out because he's like i can't pee with you looking at me you know looking <laughs> not looking looking at me <laughs> i can't got, pee unless you're smooching my the back of my neck you dirty whore <laughs> And he's like, Yo, I can't pee unless open. you're in uniform and watching, you know, fucking <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like pecker checkers, right? I can't, I can't pee unless you tell me that my father is proud of me. Jesus. If, you, if you've ever seen his face, you know, he's got like one eye open and he's giving her the sneer, the veteran sneer. And I'm like, babe, would you please just, just pee, just pee. <laughs> so after it's done, he's holding this urinal proudly. He's like, now what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm just going to go set it in the sink. I'm just, and he's like, is there a cheeseburger in the sink? I mean, <laughs> I can't even stress to y'all that by the time we got home and he got that cheeseburger, the word cheeseburger pissed me off. <laughs> it did. It did. She never more messaged me and said, dude, I hate cheeseburgers. <laughs> I was like, why? <laughs> and she started sending me videos. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> that had to. But I am. I am glad because he said from past surgeries, you know, he's come out and he's wanted to throw punches and this and that. He woke up the happiest motherfucker you've ever <laughs> freaking met. And I've seen him. I've seen him completely wasted at a Marine wedding and he wasn't this happy. He literally was so damn happy. He was like, you gotta hit him up. That's the time when I come out of surgery. All I want to do is suck a dick. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, like, like, seriously, like, I'm <laughs> about to shit my pants on morphine. If you put a cock in front of me, I'll suck it faster than you can say Jack Robinson. This is surgery, <laughs> boy. Let's go. But, you know, he, he, he wants to walk out, and they won't let you because of liabilities, and they're willing him out. And he's like, hey, hey. Suck his dick. It? They'll let you walk anywhere. He's like, hey, how is it? And I'm like, any other time you're grumbling at people. And right now, Skeeter's prancing and you're in the chair. And he's like doing the, the freaking princess wave at these people. And I'm like, oh, my God. I just. Can we what just. What does the on? princess wave look like? Well, we're not on video, so I can't really show you. Just but give us you, a little description. Was it, you know. The princess wave. You know, the hand in the air where the wrist barely turns and they're doing the princess mm -hmm. wave. Yeah. If you've ever watched. Like one, a windmill cupping some balls. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever softly. watched one of these softly stupid ass parades from like um when they put the uh Miss USA or whatever in the car and she's doing that freaking princess wave. That's what the fuck he's doing, the princess wave. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You your description uh, made a vivid image in my mind and I'm gonna take that to bed tonight. <laughs> so so, it, it, it's one for the records. Let's just say the next time he has surgery. 
the, and they had this rule because of it, you know, him telling them about the violence. I could not leave the hospital. Like I had to be where they, I could bring in Skeeter at any moment. But the next fucking time I'm sneaking out and I'm going to be waiting with a gosh darn cheeseburger because I am not listening to an hour of fucking cheeseburger, 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 that is cheeseburger, funny. and put bacon on that bitch. And I'm like, cheeseburger is oh. like the ultimate, like, I'm fucked up. I'm not in my right mind. Uh, please, somebody get me something that, that inspires love in me. The tea biggie. <laughs> I, I have to disagree. I should have really? been, what's, what's I the, should the have been begging for fucking tacos. Mm. <laughs> you know what but I'm you're, saying? You're an East Coaster, man. Like, I live in San Diego. Oh, dude. no, no. I, I grew I up on the this. West Coast. Tacos, man. 3.30 in the morning, drunkard and shit. What do you want? Wait, where's your taco place? One of the best go-tos was uh, Taco Star in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Man, they Jesus could, fuck. They could you, fuck you up with some tacos when you're drunk yeah, off your ass. Yeah, fire hole until noon the next day. <laughs> Colorado Springs. Oh, oh man, I'm telling you, fire hole until noon the next day? Psh, come so, on. So, so really quick. Colorado Springs, man, I was telling jokes. And uh, Colorado Springs is a fucked up place to tell jokes, I'll tell you that. I, I, I walked out on stage. First words out of my mouth, I was like, hey, does anybody hear like Legos? This guy <laughs> lifts up his shirt and showed me his fucking gun. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, cool. We're moving on. All right. Uh, Jesus. So, well, how do you guys feel about Palestine? Uh, let's, let's go there. So, really quick, Don, Ron. Oh, my God. Colorado Springs. Ron, how long do you have to uh, stick with us? Really quick. How long do I have with you? Yes. Uh, let me see. I got, it's six o'clock. I got about 30 minutes, and then I got to run over and do a set next door. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll go to break as much fun as we're having. I have to piss because I am drinking a ton of, you know, pop, not soda, but I'm drinking a lot of pop. It's Coca-Cola. Uh, Do you need well, I was going to say, thank God, I need to pee. <laughs> right? I'm about to burst Well, I peed on air, so fuck you guys. I'm going to go smoke some pot, uh, but I'll be back in like five minutes. So yeah. That's cool. I'll, I'll so, you guys up. so that's good. We're going to go to break. We'll come back on the other side of the break. We hopefully will still have Ron with us if he hasn't went to do his set. You are listening to the Memorial Day Barracks Party right here on WDVRDBRadio.net. In the break. While you're gone, think of my genitals. Let's get it on. We've got some fun bread made for you. The music. Let's go. You're listening to. WTVR on DVRadio.net. Five veterans, four veterans. Simply made for you. What's DV Radio? DV Radio is for you, the veteran, active duty service member, caregiver, and civilian supporter of the military. DVRadio.net is the online veteran network made for and by veterans. From original shows to syndication, you can find it here on DVRadio.net. In an effort to continue our mission and make better quality shows for each and every one of you, visit our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Whether you can only pledge $1 per month or that entire million dollar inheritance your uncle left you, there's a tier with rewards waiting for you. So why not keep DV Radio running and get rewarded at the same time? Head to patreon.com forward slash DV Radio now. That's patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Radio. We're back on the air. We're back on the air. DV Radio. That's right. We are back on the air on DV Radio. Net. WDV Arthur. If you missed the start of the show, it is Memorial Day Barracks Party. Hopefully, you're listening to us on podcast if you didn't get to hear us live, and we are sorry and apologize that you didn't get to hear the music. But I forgot to mention before we went into that song break that Snafu song was also dedicated to Kenny Collender. I hope I'm not butchering that name. Um, so, what are you all guys doing, eating, drinking, smoking, whatever? <laughs> uh, are you just... asking us? Are you asking the guests? Or are you asking the listeners? Well, I've already asked the listeners because, <laughs> unbeknownst to you, we have a chat room. Oh, are they saying anything sexy in that chat room, or should we just move on? 
Well, they were talking about how a Chair Force guy was so scared that he couldn't be in uh, the show and not grace them with their presence in chat. Oh, I want to apologize for that. I mean, they're right. I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want you to think that, like, it's personal. Like, it's nothing. I would love to be in chat right now. I'm in a hotel room in Hollywood and... and and if anybody knows anything about hotel rooms in major cities, they don't have Wi-Fi. It's not a thing. So uh, <laughs> I can't get on and, and go on and, and respond to all your like, oh, Ron Ripley, what it's like to have such a big penis. Like, I don't have time for that right now. Uh, but I'm I just want to add like, that not all chair force are pussies. We're in chat, okay? Just not here. Yeah, you fucking pussy. <laughs> who's saying chair force people are pussies? Like, honestly, who says that? I mean... I was dead, <laughs> fucking pussy. Every fucking one. Well, oh my God. I have to. I well, have to admit that but anybody that says people in the okay. air force are pussies because they sit in chairs all the time, they've obviously never been blown up by a drone in some small <laughs> village in Afghanistan. So fuck you, okay? Like, put yourself wait, in other wait. people's shoes. All right, somewhere wait, out there, right now on this Memorial Day, there's a child starving. Because heroes like us killed their dad. All right, so let's figure that out. All right, oh a fucking little bitch. I have a, I have a buddy named Rolf, and uh, he was a uh, forward air controller. And let me tell you, he's now a sheriff in in a county in Colorado, and that's as far as I'll say. Right, because it sounds like he's been hating children his entire career. I'm going to tell you what this motherfucker. He's three inches shorter than me, and I would not. I would not want to meet him in a dark alley because he would whoop my ass. Well, from this side of the phone, you're all tiny, and I will ejaculate all over. All over. <laughs> oh, I got to be honest. I'm, I'm fucking camera off. Force, okay? I got to be honest. Like, I can, from a seated position, I can get ejaculate up past your helmet, okay? Like, what? I'm a hero. I'm a fucking what? hero, okay? I got three achievement medals, dog. <laughs> Three. Three, really? He got some jelly bellies. Oh boy! <laughs> like some people are like, "Yo, dude, I kicked in the door in this hut and then shot Osama bin Laden in the face." I'm like, "Yo, I kicked in the door in this chat room and had sex with four children." Chair force. Like, fuck you. Right? I'm like, so. So speaking of people in the Air Force and all and, and being pussies, <laughs> oh, back probably, it's probably been five or six years ago now, one of my best friends from school, we're, we're still friends, we're like really tight, Justin Creech, he he joined the Air Force and he went to Iraq a couple times. And me and him hey, were Justin, emailing. Hey Justin, Justin Creech, this is Ron Ripley. Next time you're introduced on a radio show, fucking say hello. <laughs> so, so me and him would email each other because I'd already been to Iraq, and he was telling me about what the Air Force goes through, right? And he he was a he was a desk jockey, not disc desk jockey, right? And uh, he sent me a picture one day, and it was of this big pyramid mound in front of one of the uh, fucking uh, the uh, the trailers that he worked out of. And I was like, "What's this?" He's like, "Dude, you won't believe what happened today." He said, I'm sitting there getting ready to get up. I walk towards the door, get called back to the office, and then 30 seconds later, a mortar hit right there, and he sent me the picture of the mortar that hit. It hit right there, and it was maybe 10 feet from the door. Had he went through that fucking door, he'd have been blown up. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? His entire fucking fob got raided that night. I was like, it's a good Holy thing he uh, got called shit. back to fill the colonel's stapler. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, are you fucking last kidding week, me? Last week I was in New York City and I got really drunk and walked around Times Square in the morning. I thought a transsexual around just to see what they were up to. And you know what? I didn't have sex with them. If I'd have gone into that room with them, I would have had sex with them. But I didn't. And how lucky am I? Huh? <laughs> so I, mean, I just I don't know. I mean, we're talking about, you know, like shit, like times we could have been you know, heroes. And, and that was the time I could have died for my country and I didn't. Uh, and I feel bad about it, but I mean, she was actually kind of skanky looking too. He, she, I don't know. Uh, not my business. Again, so I'm not trying to assume. Just to remind everybody that's either tuning in live right now or you're not understanding what's going on in the podcast, Memorial Day is not lost to any of us. We all have our ways of dealing with things. We all have our ways of coping. This is one of them. Yes, we all have our dark moments. It's true. But... Just I'm because a, we're, just because we're sitting here laughing. Of me, phoner. 
No, 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 no. Because we were we were having at it earlier. Uh, just You're like because this Ron Ripley, he doesn't give a fuck about the sanctity of life. What a right. Uh, just because we're laughing and joking doesn't mean that we are not remembering those brothers and sisters that aren't with us today. Trust me, Ken would love this shit right now. He's probably laughing his ass off wherever the fuck he is. And I well, don't I think even it's religion, important so. to remember, too, like in all seriousness, Memorial Day is a very solemn day. It's a very important day. That's, it's everybody that's ever fucking paid paid more than a buck oh five to be part of this country. I mean, that's like today's the day we're celebrating. And, and, and it, as a military veteran, like I never made that sacrifice. I mean, I, I went out there and I had, I tried to have sex with as many chicks as I could in Thailand, but like, <laughs> I'm not as strong as those other veterans that actually had sex with chicks in Thailand and gave their life doing it. So I want to like honor them. And, and it's like, dude, there's a dude, a lot of people like, you know, we have a million fortunes that a lot of people have other uh, paid the price for. I think it's, it's an important thing to be able to do that. But However, I'm a comedian, and so like I just I just love taking the piss out of things, and and being in the Air Force, like dude, I'm in the Air Force on Memorial Day. If you can't get called uh, a homo by all of your dead friends, I mean, then fuck it. Why did you yeah. join the Air Force? Yeah, so, so I got we're, we were sitting day. there in uh, the barracks at Shelby, Mississippi, when uh, we were deploying, and I just really didn't know Ken at the time, Ken Carl. Um, and we were getting to know each other. We were all, you know, starting to warm up to one another. And he was a big energy drinker, like the monster energy drinks and shit. So we're, we're in the barracks one night and he's like, so you want to be a part of our little click on? Huh? I was like, sure. Why not? He's like, all right, I just, I just drink this monster energy drink. I dare you to lick that monster energy drink. And I got ready to lick it. He goes, he goes, wait, I have herpes and I may have a very horrible STD. I was like, okay. So I lick the Monster Energy drink can, right? <laughs> Knowing that he's bullshitting me. Because I can already That's tell it's a... Right. And, and he's like, okay, well, you obviously don't give a shit about life. You're in. <laughs> that was probably <laughs> one of the best moments ever. And then after that, we got really close. And every time we'd take a picture... Instead of saying cheese, like the civilians wanted us to, he would grab me, pull him close, and say, I've got wood every fucking time. And every time someone says something about wood, that's all I think about is Ken pulling me to him and saying, I've got wood. And it's probably one of the best <laughs> memories I've ever got of someone. Like, holy shit. Uh, I have a question for DVs listening. Yeah. Um, Boner, Joaquin, everybody, chime in. Where do you think on Memorial Day is a sexier place to take a selfie than uh, 9-11, you know, Memorial or the <laughs> Vietnam Memorial? Where do you think we'll get more likes? Honestly, that's if you're, like, I'm a millennial and I'm just like, I've never fought in a war, but I'm like, oh, Memorial Day. Uh, where, where do you think I should go? Uh, well, if we're the, talking millennials, or if, nine, uh, or if the, it. If we're talking millennials, you better find a fucking broken computer or smashed smartphone. All right. Okay. So, like, like a millennial takes a flip phone to the Vietnam Memorial. How a many flip... likes do you think they're going to get? That a Instagram? flip phone? A flip phone? A millennial? <laughs> nice try. Right. How many actually... well, there are millennials. Actually been to both. What's I've that? Been to them, uh, I've been to both. I've been to the memorial and I've been to the 9 11 memorial. Both are pretty solemn, um, but that wall, that wall will mm. speak to you. The wall, you know, you know the that, wall does talk. Absolutely, the wall. I live in I, San Diego, and the wall it, it makes me cry every day. Uh, it just keeps going up, and uh, you know, it's <laughs> California, I knew it. where I we're all. I knew it. There's a lot of housekeepers that can't. You see fucking fuckers! <laughs> you <laughs> actually live in wall. California, where we hope that the, the the fault line will just break and you guys fall off into the ocean. That's what I'm we're all praying it. for. You know, Let's just be you know what, though? If, if, if California suffers an earthquake and the fault breaks us off into the ocean, I guarantee you, cum will unite the continents. <laughs> like, there's no way we can drift too far. There's so much cum on either side of the fall. I seriously it'll, thought he's... Like like <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to joke like right now. See the Avengers? <laughs> like, Is he saying I, cum? 
I thought he said drip, <laughs> not yes. drip. Yes, he is saying human ejaculate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm making sure. He's speaking of <laughs> semen and not the <laughs> naval kind. <laughs> hey! Well, San Francisco is a gay capital of the world, so, you know. See, this well, is what I'm happy for, because you well, guys if, really believe it. Like, all the California vets are fucking nuts, and it's not. We're not nuts. We're just horny. Just, well, I, just Ron. Ron's the only uh, one who's not. On a, on a serious note, on a very serious note, I can honestly say that if we ever get monetized, YouTube will fucking censor the fuck out of this goddamn YouTube video <laughs> podcast, and it will yeah, never make monetized. one penny Lock in its entire fucking lifespan. Like ever. the second you start censoring veterans, the sec that's that's when you know uh, the Holocaust never happened, man. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, I can't believe he said that. For the ones that. listening who think Ron's just doing this because he's on a show or whatever, this is Ron in real life. We've seen no, it. Man, yeah, exactly. We've like seen this. it, and you can call me a bad mom, you can say whatever you want, but my um, teenager dearly loves his humor and asks oh, me constantly, have I heard from Ron? And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, and you can say whatever you want, I really don't care, I just don't believe in sheltering a 15, soon to be 16 year old from the real world that is veterans. Yeah, that's fucking great. And I, I can, he, thank you so much. That that means a lot to me. Like I like your kid. Your kid's a good. He's a good little. He's a good young man. He and, liked uh, talking to you because he said, "Mom, honestly, you know, I just think you're nuts." But now I hear another vet that just makes <laughs> jokes about the weird oh, shit, and I'm like. And because I told everybody when we were up there, because even Ron asked, he's like, is it OK to swear? You know, and I'm like, he lives with me. Don't. don't hey, what don't, happens in the woods, man? <laughs> don't <laughs> don't be a censor. You know, don't censor around him. Y'all just whatever. And the kid asks me about him all the time. Is Ron coming back uh, to no. the Navy Farm? Are we going? Is he going to be on the East Coast? And I'm like. Honey, if he comes cool back, kid. that's what I do. It's like that's how I get my fans early. You know, David Koresh did the same thing, but uh, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm cooler. <laughs> no, I. Uh, now, that means I, a lot my to mother me. is very, oh, very, 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 very kind. I, I think I think you did a fantastic job raising that young man. He's a cool kid, and I like him a lot. The cool thing, is, you know, because me, I'm 37, and I have this thing. Um, I don't know how to else to say this, but I fucking hate kids. Uh, not, not. <laughs> Not especially kids in general, but uh, particularly, specifically, your fucking kids. Your fucking, if you're listening to this, I hate your fucking <laughs> kids. Um, but your kid, uh, on the other hand, is actually really cool. And I like him. And I, I think that's the thing. It's like I have this thing because I'm not a parent. Um, you know, me personally, I think the hardest thing about motherhood, the most uh, thankless job about motherhood is trying to avoid paying child support. So me, uh, take a moment if you need one. Me personally, I like to speak to kids. You know, one of the coolest things that ever happened to me when I was a young man, I was 17 years old and my godfather spoke to me like I was a man. He sat me down. He didn't sit me down. It wasn't like, like, I gotta give you this advice. But he was just like, hey, kiddo, you ever done any cocaine? And I'm like, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> but the, the first time an adult speaks to you as a child, like when everyone else speaks to you like a teenager and like you're going to be doing some shit and maybe you're going to get your fucking grades together. But the first time an adult speaks to you like a human being, like an adult, like an equal, that will really resound with them. That'll, that'll really resonate with them. And they will take that with them. And they will re always remember like, holy shit, I remember what it was like the first time an adult treated me like an equal. And I do believe that that moment kind of helps define how people are going to be. That moment was very, very profound for me personally. And so anytime I meet like another kid, because I'm not a parent, like I'm the person, I'm the first fucking person to be like, oh my God, is uh, prom sucking? You should smoke some weed about it. The fuck out of there. Prom sucks. Uh, <laughs> like that's who I am. But like, and, and to have a teenager hear that shit, that really wrecks their world. And I'm, I'm finding that out uh, now. So it really, thank you so much, man. I hope, I hope your kid's kicking ass. For uh, all the people SAT listening, suck, man. I'll fuck, I'll fuck him up. I'll, I'll go to he he I'll didn't him. damage my son. My son <laughs> thought he was the coolest comedian he has ever met. I'm we promise there. Ron, <laughs> Ron did not <laughs> touch Devastator in his no-no place. <laughs> but my kid, I mean, they game. They were sitting there gaming, and they they were talking and chatting, and. He comes back after Ron's left and he's like, I really, really, really. And my son doesn't bond with people a lot. You know, um, he his grandmother's very liberal. So it makes his it's made his opinions very confused. And after that, he started thinking for himself. After we visited the DV farm, he actually started thinking for himself.
Okay, maybe and Ron did touch him in his no-no place. <laughs> nah. I'll never land nah, I don't, I'll never I don't land want that rumor. But, that boy's uh, I mean. but on a serious <laughs> note, he asked me all the time. He's like, have you heard anything from him? I'm like, well, he's a busy guy. You know, he's always in the comedian club. Oh, and- I'm super busy. I'm just, I'm writing the next great dick joke. I'm so fucking busy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at one point you were in Japan and then you were there and then you were here. And I'm like, kid, nobody can keep up with Ron. Ron will just magically (laughs) appear because that's what Ron does. (laughs) Cocaine is a hell of a drug. You guys are very sweet. I appreciate that kind of love uh, all the way from the East Coast and all all the the dysfunctional veterans, man. I love it, man. I'm I'm so excited, again, to have the podcast coming back. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever listened to uh, the Struggle Brothers Hour, but... I mean, when I love the the air, brothers, I, I had 56 episodes and I had such a fun time with it, just meeting people and talking. And, uh, you know, sometimes you go through things, uh, you go through career changes, you know, like I'm a comedian. I'm not going to be the next Bill Burr. Bill Burr <laughs> is the most amazing comedian on the planet. Dave Chappelle that, is the most amazing comedian on the planet. I cannot be these really people. quick. Ron, but you know what? What's up? Really? Really quick, Bill Burr is probably the only motherfucker out there right now that I've seen on the main stream that gives no fucks if his, you know, advertisers are like, we're not going to support you because he's like, okay, fuck you. I'm going to keep saying what the fuck I want. Like, he doesn't give well, no is, shit. Bill Burr has been doing it for 30 fucking years. Yep. And he's been a professional. He's been kind. He's been good to people. And all the time, he says whatever the fuck he wants. So, yeah. I, I really... Me personally, I believe the true measure of a man, of a man, a the real man. man does whatever the fuck he wants, but he doesn't have to hurt anybody to do it. And right. I think Bill Burr is a, a great role model in that. Exactly. In that um, so, how much longer do we have you for, Ron? Like, literally. Sorry. I was saying, how much longer do we have you for? Because I, I don't want to. I got, I, got, I got a couple more minutes. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm staying next door to the Hollywood Comedy Store. This okay. Has been like. Andrew, Andrew Dice Clay told me to fuck myself in the parking lot down below. So I've always wanted to stay here. Um, <laughs> and, and this is literally next to the Hollywood Comedy Store. It's like tonight well, I'm going to go to the Hollywood Comedy Store and I'm going to see Bill Burr. I'm going to see Joe Rogan. I'm going to see all these guys throw down until 3 o'clock in the morning. I well, if you get a chance, if you get a chance and you see Bill Burr and Joe Rogan, tell them I said, fuck you. Have a nice day. And if you see Andrew Dice Clay, just flip him I'm off. I'm going to be too from, busy sucking from I'm going to be like, trying to like Louis C.K. myself into a career here instead of out of one. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, tell him that all of us at DV Radio love Bill Burr and also DV Noggs loves him. So he better, you know, make an appearance, you know, one day, even before we become famous throughout the entire interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to use the moment to uh, sign off and say goodbye to you. Thank you so much for having me on. I cannot wait to bring more episodes of Honorable Discharge to you guys. I hope you guys like listening. I hope you guys like the guests that I bring on. I hope you like the content that I throw out there. If you don't, feel free to email Boner. Tell him exactly your terrible, terrible thoughts. Tell him everything (laughs) that you hate because that's a call that I will ignore. Um, but I can't thank you guys enough for having me on and, and giving me this platform and, and let me, you know, go out and meet you guys. Cause you know, I get to meet people, you know, like, like your kids and stuff. And if I'm not telling right. them to jerk off and plant, I'm telling them to change the world. So I really, <laughs> hey. I love the access you've given me and I can't thank you enough. Hey brother, honestly, I pushed you into doing this. I'm glad you finally fucking done it because you are fucking wonderful at doing the show. Well, we're honored you so to have and you back. You were right. You were right. I mean, when you're right, you're right. And you know, it, it's not it, it, it's not gay if it's family. So, right, right. You know, everybody knows that. <laughs> hey, if you can't keep it in your pants, keep exactly. it in the family. Hey, Ron, All thank right. you for coming on tonight, and we look forward to debuting honorable discharge in a few weeks. Yeah, you guys be well. If you can't be good, be careful. All right, break a leg tonight, brother. Thank you kindly. So, yes, Honorable Discharge from Ron Ripley, exclusive to dbradio.net, is coming very soon in the next few weeks. Please stay tuned to dbradio.net as well as Facebook and Twitter, and we will let you know what becomes of that. If you're a Patreon member, you heard in the break, uh, you can go from $1 all the way up to a couple hundred dollars if you're a small business and you have troubles marketing because of economic and financial times but within those tiers you get 
certain perks like half an hour extra podcast per month which starts in june all tiers start in june but you also get to hear stuff like ron ripley's little promo that we done saturday during barracks talk before everybody else and there will be stuff like that at a moment's notice and if you're a fucking patreon member of dv radio you get to hear that so go be a patreon member if you can afford it if not Wait until the next month or you have a little bit extra. But we need to go to break because we have a few more dedications that we need to get out there. We're going to listen to this and then we'll be back on the other side of the break. And we don't know what we're going to do because it's DV Radio and we never know what we're going to do. Stay tuned to the Memorial Day Barracks Talk right here on DVRadio.net. You're listening to Dead Air on DV Radio. Go fuck yourselves, assholes. Stamp out this fire to dust. Take what you must. The rest is all mine. Take away what I didn't say. I'm gonna leave it all behind. Silence is far from the sky tonight. You can take all the sun away. Just because Burn this page of the past away You can't take the one The one that I love Today is the day we put aside to remember fallen heroes and to pray that no heroes will ever have to die for us again. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It's a day of thanks for the valor of others, a day to remember the splendor of America, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I was thinking this morning that across the country, children and their parents will be going to the town parade, and the young ones will sit on the sidewalks and wave their flags as the band goes by. Later, maybe they'll have a cookout or a day at the beach, and that's good, because today is a day to be with the family and to remember. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to the regulations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. At the grave of a hero, we end not with sorrow at the inevitable loss, but with the contagion of his courage, and with a kind of desperate joy, we go back to the fight. Thank all of you and God bless you and have a day full of memories. So So help me God. God. Just what's in front of me and I can't explain. So I won't lose, no I won't lose what I've gained.
You're listening to Barrett's Talk on DVRadio.net. Yes, you are listening to DV Radio on DVRadio.net. WDVR, this is the Memorial Day Barracks Talk. It's our third annual. It is May 27, 2019. I'm Bonnerwood. We still have Nevermore PTS Dog, also known as his real name, Joaquin Waitai and Oink. Um, I have something that I want to bring up because I believe Oink had a problem while ago. YouboraCoffeeRoasters.com is it Yubora Coffee Roasters? Because I've already forgot. YuboraCoffee.com. Sorry, guys. Phil and, and, and Andre, I always fuck that up. YuboraCoffee.com. You can go over there, buy Battlegrounds Coffee for from DV Radio. It's our own special blend. Uh, you can get 15% off of the five-pound bag if you're a Patreon member in that tier. It's 15% off, again, on Patreon only. Um, if not, you can pay the full price over at YuboraCoffee.com. But what happened to you there, Oink, while Ron was with us? If you would please let us all know, because I fucking cried reading what you told me. Oink, gone. Bye-bye. Oink, Oink fell asleep again. No, I'm here. Ready. I had fucking <laughs> muted again. He's usually ah. pulling a fucking six. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What button no, do I push? I, I'm sitting here, and I'm listening to Ron. I'm like, well, fuck. You know, Staffy in chat, he mentioned, you know, drink Battlegrounds coffee. I'm like, fuck, I got to order me some. So I hop on their website. I'm ordering it. I ship two bags to myself. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. A brother of mine down there in Idaho, he loves the stuff, too. All right. Let me order him some, too, while I'm on here, because, you know, that's what we do. We take care of our brothers and sisters, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm ordering it. I forget what Ron said exactly, but I'm fucking rolling. And <laughs> I go ahead and just hit the send button. So what do I do? I send me twice the order to myself instead of <laughs> splitting it in half to me and the brother down there in Idaho. So it was. <laughs> Thanks, That's... Ron, for making me ship the shit to the wrong address again. <laughs> Ron's over at the Air comedy Force guys, store. man. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rod's over at the comedy store right now, so I'm going to have to relay that message back to him because that's fucking hilarious. And Ron, <laughs> you just made a guy spend a lot of money on some coffee for two different people, and he still sent it to himself instead of sending it se- separately. So Yeah, so in our pre-show funny. when we were talking about taking a bite out of me, well, I'll be marinating in coffee here later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, shit. <laughs> I do hope everybody enjoyed the uh, Memorial Day tribute song that I had there. I didn't want to make uh, it all about a uh, Memorial Day speech, but I did want for anyone listening and our host um, understand that Memorial Day is more than just cookouts and celebration in a extravagant and mattress selling way. I have nothing against cells or cooking out or nothing like that, but for some reason employers and all have lost that and just turned it into a huge money scheme so i hope you all got a lot from that uh that message in that song i'm sorry if you didn't uh hopefully those listening did but uh that song hit me really hard when i found it uh from our licensor and uh yeah i I wanted to put something to it so i've done that for all of you here at DV Radio, that are our long-time hardcore fans. We actually have a uh, hardcore fan right here tonight who is a driver and only gets to listen on Mondays and Tuesdays. But apparently, we never get to see them because, well, we're never on on Mondays and Tuesdays because I'm an asshole, and that's the days that I put up podcasts. But ELO HSSA, we will try our damnedest to start doing something on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um... I'm working on a female, all female vet show, uh, to give all of you listeners something different, uh, in way of sausage fest, as, uh, Ron Ripley <laughs> brought up <laughs> earlier. Uh, honestly, uh, I don't think there's enough female stuff out there from the military. Um, Nevermore and I have talked yeah, about never this. Yeah, Nevermore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Nevermore. Uh, we've all talked about this for the females. Uh, I, I, I think, in a lot of ways, females do get overlooked. Um, There is a lot more to female rehabs and female outreach programs than people understand. That's why the DV Farm, at the current moment, cannot uh, house females. Um, We don't turn them down, but we can't house them. 
That being said, we're trying other avenues here on DV Radio uh, to give them a voice, let you know the differences, uh, i.e. serving, civilian life, experience, background, stuff like that. Um, I'm looking at a few different avenues right now, so hopefully in the future, in the next coming year, we will have a all-female hosted veteran radio show here on dvradio.net. Um, I also have a job, uh, posting on Facebook. And if anybody is listening that has put in an application, if you have not heard from me, if you've not received an email, if you've not received a message from Facebook, trust me, I've probably fucking sent you one. So if you haven't heard from me via Facebook, email me at info at dbradio.net and take a screenshot of your submitted application. If you don't take a screenshot of that submitted application, I will know whether or not I have given, I've have sent you a message or email. But Facebook has been really stupid in the last two weeks with their huge ass update. So if you've not heard from me, please, I am begging you because there's a couple people that have sent in stuff. Um, send me an email, info at dvradio.net, subject it, Facebook job application with a submitted job application via Facebook. Otherwise, I'm not going to even respond to it. I'm not even going to take the time to look over it. But if you've not heard from me, please do that ASAP because I've sent you guys messages and I've not heard from you yet. And I know a few of you were a few likely candidates. So please email me, info at dbradio.net. So... I want to try and get through the night with all of these dedications, but we're not going to be able to finish it if we don't go beyond 2200 Eastern Standard Time. So we're going to try and extend this tonight. Um, hopefully that's good for you guys listening to podcasts. Who the fuck is that in the background that sounds like there's a goddamn hurricane going on? Like, holy shit. I'm about to die over here. And I can't tell which one of you it is because DV Radio LLC is overriding you in Zoom because I'm the loudest. But I still hear it in my fucking ears. <laughs> it uh, knew. So holy shit. You said something about females and, you know, the all-female podcast. But I guess it's funny that you mention it. For the ones who don't know, Nevermore is ne- just Nevermore now. Nevermore is struck out on her own and trying to start up her own podcast She's looking for a co-host or two or three or, you know, not a million because I don't know how many Zoom can hold. does not have to be female, but the same kind of applies with DV Radio. If you want to possibly be a co-host, going to need a sound clip from you and you're going to have to email it directly to me. And that email address would be D-I-A-B-L-A-3178 at Yahoo.com. Yes, you heard it right. Devil girl. Yep. That's me. Uh, other than that, I don't really have anything except, Bo, happy for anniversary. Before I go into the for anniversary, if you don't know what the fuck she just said about the email to Nevermore, just send it to info at dvradio.net and subject it Nevermore show. Because I have no fucking clue what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. <laughs> so. In my own little world. So if you've not been listening to DB Radio for a long time, you're a new listener, or you just didn't give a shit back in 2016, uh, back when SRP was uh, doing all of the airing for DB Radio, we had a very long Memorial Day weekend, and me and him just went all out one night. And it just so happened that we had call-ins then because we didn't vet things, but someone from my area code... And I was like, I know this area code. <laughs> Called in and requested a song on Memorial Day. Uh, it was our first annual Memorial Day barracks party. And it just happened to be Nevermore, who has not left our side since. And I love her to death. She's a fucking sister. I'd do anything for her. Y- you want to talk about that night there, Nevermore? <laughs> <laughs> so I get this PM because... For me to make a phone call to a complete stranger is very, very hard. It does. It goes against everything in my social awkwardness that could possibly in my head go wrong. And I get this PM. So I noticed your area code and we're in the same area code. I was like, oh, great. A stalker. I get back. 
don't worry, I can't stalk you. I'm in a wheelchair. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'll still slap your handicapped ass. We've been friends. <laughs> <laughs> we have been friends since that day. And I think it's because people, when they meet somebody in Bo's condition, they either pity or just treat him like everybody else. And he's one of those that really, really, really doesn't like pity. I didn't know this man. I didn't know him. I was asked to come in there to monitor the chat because it was a really bad night and there were people in there in crisis and I was crisis trained. So I was just asked to come, you know, but nobody was calling in. So I called in and three years later, here we are. Yeah. So a couple years ago, it was when DV6 had one of his first time visits and we went to uh, the meat center in Mount Airy. It's called Mount Airy Meat Center meat center and uh we got some meats for everybody because we were going to cook out on the grill and i'm in my wheelchair my mom's pushing me and six is with us and i've known this lady since i was probably eight or nine years old and she obviously doesn't remember me because i've changed in all this time the medicines changed my body and all so she comes up and we i ask her about some meats that are on sale and I swear to God you would have thought I was a fucking two year old oh honey how are you or is everything okay <laughs> so then DB6 chimes in his DB6 way he says a couple <laughs> words and then she goes oh isn't he just being nasty to you and I'm sitting here <laughs> and I'm like in my mind I'm like I won't to choke the living shit out of this 80 year old woman right but I can't because I'm not being I was... mean to the poor handicapped man <laughs> right the handicapped man did we offend you I've <laughs> known this lady since I, I was eight years old so it's it's been a while it's been a few decades since I've known her and she's treating me like a two-year-old and in my mind I understand I get it she doesn't know that I'm a not mentally incapable and B she doesn't <laughs> understand my situation Mentally incapable is debatable. Anyway, so we're sitting there after checkout. DB6 had to pay for everybody's, but we're sitting there. DB6 and my mom takes everything back outside, and I'm sitting there. And DB6 just happened to leave his smartphone on the counter. Next thing I know, this young girl, she had to have been 18 or 19 years old. She was still in high school, you could tell. Goes, I believe that old man just left his phone here. <laughs> And in my, like, if I could have went, yes, I would have, but we're in a public place. It was fucking crowded as fuck. Would have drawn attention to myself. I hate attention, so I didn't do it. But, you know, I've got that grin on my face. She comes up to me, this 80-year-old woman comes up to me. She goes, I think that old man left his phone in here on the counter, right? And he's getting ready to get in the car, in the truck and drive away. I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll take it to him. He's a friend of mine. She went, are you sure? That old man right there, that that's getting in the white truck, He he's a friend of yours? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. I can take it to him. She went, that old man right there. She had to have said old man about five fucking times. I tell six what that's happened. That's my grandpa. That's my grandpa from you know, down up north. He's, he's all right. right. Right? So my mom comes back in and takes me out, and six is getting ready to get in his truck and drive off. I was like, six, wait. He's like, what? I was like, that lady said that old man left his phone in there on the counter. He went, who the fuck she calling old? She's at least 200 years older than I am. <laughs> I remember that story because for some reason she decided to talk really slow like you were yeah. stupid versus yeah. yeah, so when I she first you telling that story because you were so pissed. I get this yeah. message and he's like, This fucking grandma, hundred billion years old, talks to me like I can't understand English. She uses like one syllable every five <laughs> seconds and I'm like, I'm sorry. So yeah, it was it was the day before you and Joaquin and everybody else came up to the house for the cookout for DV. And this lady, I swear to God, you would have thought she was Captain Kirk's mom. She goes, oh, honey, is he picking on you? And I'm like, wait a minute, you're not Captain Kirk's mom. <laughs> but I feel like I'm in Star Trek right now before the next, before the original series, like. Holy fucking Christ, you're Captain Kirk's fucking mother. 
that's all that came to mind was Captain Kirk's mom because she talked so slow and stopped after every fucking word she could possibly stop at. <laughs> like, I wanted to run my wheelchair into the fucking refrigerator. That's how bad it pissed me off. Like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! But yes, if you have a demo that you can send in, MP3 files only, MP3 files only, for Nevermore, please send them in to info at dvradio.net if you didn't catch your email. Because honestly, I'm drinking too much Coca-Cola to understand what the fuck she said. Sorry. <laughs> I love you. I mean, I could talk slow to you. <laughs> I, I, I sure when Two you pops. guys when you guys uh, come up to, uh, hey 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 nevermore when you guys come up to help me with the room I will literally choke the fuck out of you. Remember, <laughs> just remember, I can outrun you because Lieutenant Daniel Legs is in a wheelchair, and I will still hit it for cripple man. I do not care. Well, if it wasn't for the fucking rocks and the bumps in the yard, I would so run your ass over. <laughs> <laughs> Right you up better. until that battery died because six never got you the solar power panels. Yeah, that motherfucker <laughs> still ain't got me solar panels. Like, what the fuck? Like, really? Really, six? Is that how it's going to be? Is that what we're going to do now? <laughs> is, All I can that... say is if people ever seen some of our conversations, they would think I'm like the cruelest person to somebody in a wheelchair in the entire world like they would lynch mob me at some of the shit i say to him but on the other hand if i treated him like he was pitiful we wouldn't we wouldn't have made it three years as friends i've been on the memorial show since they started i didn't host the first one but i gotta yeah. tell you it's been a three years of uh let's just say if you could see our pm some days you would probably put me in jail <laughs> Oh, people would definitely. Would be Did I offend you, Mister Handicap Man? <laughs> people would definitely think that Nevermore neglected the fuck out of handicapped people. Not oh, even yeah. joking. Like, there's some days we just go on GIF and meme wars, and you would honestly think that we were so fucked up in the head that something was wrong with both of us. Like, it well, gets there is, but you know, there's no point in hiding it. But <laughs> right. the point is. We have fun. We're friends. We've been, he doesn't live but like an hour and 20 minutes away, even though he's in Bumpa, Google Maps doesn't even explain. He has to give directions <laughs> to the point of where Google Map ends. That's how far up in Bumfuck Egypt he is. Look, the first to... time we went up to Bo's house, I heard banjos. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there was banjo music, and I was like, oh, my butthole. But the funny thing I is, wait, 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 wait. That don't wait. scare me, but. It's one of those where you have to take directions. You see that tree that's got the limb hanging down? You got to make two lefts after that tree, and then there'll be a sign, and then you take a left at that red barn. That's the kind of directions you got to use to get to Bo's house. Wait, wait, wait. Turn, turn right at the at the dog that looks like it's dead in the middle of the road. It's not dead. He just sleeps there. <laughs> ah! just, just, just hold your tater sack there for a minute. Everybody. Including Joaquin and Nevermore and Six and Google <laughs> and anybody that's ever been to my house. Yeah, they, they crack jokes to all you motherfuckers listening. But when they first show up, dude, it's a beautiful drive up here. It's so quiet and it looks so quaint. And I'm like, I know. That's why I live in the middle of fucking nowhere so nobody can fucking <laughs> mess with me. Bullshit, dude. I think the first thing I said to you was I think I heard banjos on the way up here. <laughs> And this is why we make fun of your Wi-Fi connection. Still doesn't, still doesn't neglect the fact that you still love the drive and the fact that there's nobody to fucking mess with you. True. The drive was the drive was beautiful, but the banjo music was concerning. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Wait a second. Wait a second. Ding, ding. <laughs> we we've got spot Spotify up and running. So uh -huh. let's 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 play Jill and Banjos of Spotify. We'll load. There we go. Jillian Banjos. Let's play just a second of it. Hold on a second. Here we go. Damn, boy, you got a pretty mouth. 
So that's what Joaquin <laughs> hears when he drives to my house. This is literally, I'm driving up the road. That's a ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and yeah, no I'm right snap. at home. It don't bother me. Does he have a shooting range in his in his yard? Well, we could make a shooting range. We just haven't figured out how to get his wheelchair to ass out shooting. <laughs> I was about to say, we don't have an official shooting range, but... <laughs> Plenty of targets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still live, we live out in the country, but it's closer to the city. But it's still, you know, far enough away where there's like not a lot of people. But it ain't nothing compared to going up into the mountains. And and the directions are so weird. They take you to get to North Carolina. You go through Virginia, and I'm like, but we're already in North Carolina, so I don't understand why we have to do that. But I'll and never forget. House, you have to go to Virginia to get to North Carolina. I'll never forget the first time Nevermore came to my house because I had to fix her stuff on her computer. And she's like, so it's telling me to go to Virginia and then back down. I was like, wait, wait a fucking moment. Do not fucking do that. Go on this road. Go until you see this sign. Turn down that road and then follow the GPS. And she's like, are you sure? Because my, I was like, do what I say. I've lived here for this amount of time. I know what the <laughs> fuck I'm talking about. And she was like, okay. So she calls me on her way here. And she's like, you were totally right. This GPS actually knows where I'm going. And I was like, I know. I've lived here long enough. <laughs> I've been through the GPS there. I get it. Ambulances can't even find their place. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I had to stop in the middle of the road, which wasn't going to hurt anything because there was no traffic. I mean, like, I didn't see anybody for miles and miles. I had to stop well, well, in the middle of the road. Well, except for the dog that was sleeping. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I'm sitting, like, near his driveway, but the GPS is like, turn whatever. And I'm like, dude, which one of these motherfucking driveways up in the middle of the fucking woods is yours? And he's like, look for the sign that says blah, blah, blah. And then you turn that and it's all the way up. And then you can't miss the ramp. Once you see the handicap ramp, you know you're there. I was like, oh, I found it. I see the ramp. See, Jesus that's... Christ, why is this motherfucker so steep? I'm going to be tired before I get up there. See, that's the thing about my house, too. There's only one ramp in this entire fucking city that looks like that. <laughs> There's no ramp in the city that is even close to looking like that. So I'm like, if you see this ramp that looks like blah, 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 you're, you're in the right place. And she was like, oh, I just passed it. I have to turn around and come back down the room. That ramp? I don't know who was thinking what on that design, but all I can picture is if you're ever run away, like, on that ramp, it's like you need to have a sand pit for run, run, run away <laughs> trucks, trucks because that's what it's like going down his fucking ramp. I couldn't imagine doing it in wheels. If I was in roller skates, I'd land in fucking Virginia shooting off that thing. I'm like, the is... fuck is the steepest ramp in the history of the world made for a handicapped guy on wheels? How do yeah, you fucking so... stop at the bottom? Do you just shoot until you hit the sand pit or the garage? <laughs> yeah, so at my house, we have it set up. You've got our, our, the house we tr uh, live in, which is a double wide. And then there's no fucking deck whatsoever. So it used to be steps that were originally here when the double wide was built. And when the BA came up to, quote unquote, provide the service to me, assholes, they decided to go out front about four feet, to the right about 30 feet, down to the left about, I don't know, five feet, then back to the left about 25, 30 feet. And I'm like, holy fucking Christ, I would hate to be an able-bodied person, even at two years old, having to go up and down this fucking ramp, because you have to go up one incline, then it straightens out and you go to the right, and then you have to go up another fucking incline, then it straightens out and you're at the door. But it, when six comes in my house... I, I actually know when he's coming up the ramp because I hear him as he's turning to the right the first time. And Joaquin and Never no Nevermore knows what I'm talking about. The first time you start turning right, I can hear him because he's already out of breath and he's already <laughs> fucking. He's already. You know how you start. This ramp is like four, 437 <laughs> miles long. Right? You know how you start like stomping when oh, you're out of shit. breath I don't know how and you're y tired? Fucking carrying groceries. <laughs> We just no carried, shit, right? We carried in a few crafting supplies because I'll do some shopping for Bo because, you know, I've got two legs. He's got them. They just don't work. But and I'm carrying this shit up this ramp and I'm and I get halfway there and I set it down and I have to take a break. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, look at it like this. By the look time at, I get to the house, I'm just like, move your dog. I got a crack. And I just lay <laughs> over on the couch. Does he, look, do you have a pedal hook on the back of his uh, wheelchair? You know, the little trailer <laughs> attached so he can tow that shit up there? Well, well, look at it like this, Nevermore. In, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks, when you guys come up, you and Joaquin come up, you won't have to go up 200 <laughs> yards of ramp. I was, You'll have I was maybe about to ask, feet. are they putting a, like, a decent <laughs> ramp on your room? Well... You know, that's the cool thing about this room. See, my room is obviously attached to the left side of the house. And instead of having a front or side door, I, in my mind, was the smart genius out of all this and made it in the back. So now they have to build a deck, which goes to the back of, back edge of the room. And then to the left of the entire room is the ramp. So it's not this fucking maze labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth, if you will, a fucking ramp to go up and down. So I don't think it'll be as bad on people walking up it. Um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of fucking having to go up it and down it. Obviously, because you can't uh, traverse it any we other should, way. But it's not well, going to be anything. put an elevator on the side of the deck. Oh, well, oh yeah. like, so what was <laughs> yeah. it like visiting Bose? I was like, fuck, I don't know. I had to take a nap after the fucking ramp. <laughs> <laughs> And, and speaking of what Joaquin just said, he, he mentioned the elevator. That's one thing they wanted me to get, but I was like, I don't want to have a fucking devil's, uh, devil's, um, devil's road. What's, what's the one in Tennessee? It's devil something. You guys know what I'm talking about that are motorcycle riders. I can't think of the name of the, the road. Um, but it is one more bitch to fucking traverse up and down the mountain on a motorcycle, much less a car. And I, I used that uh, metaphor when I was telling my uh, VA uh, contact that I didn't want that big of a ramp on the back of my room. So I was like telling my contractor, look, this is what I want. This is what needs to happen because I don't have to have people have to go up and down and down and up and around and fucking go to Mount Everest and back down and plant a flag and say they were here or anything. So we made it so that they... <laughs> So that they go up the side of the room, then they make a make a left, and it's all flat, and then you enter my uh, enter my area of the quote unquote house since it's a part of the house. So it's not going to be as bad. Well, that's good. That ramp is a pain. I mean, <laughs> that ramp's fucking crazy. Uh, well, well, in in all honesty, you have to understand that it has to be at least a I think a forty five degree incline. And it has, well, yeah, I mean, so, yeah. There's certain requirements under the Americans with Disabilities Act right. in order for it to be accessible, but still, it's like they could have done it a little. Oh yeah, less they could have done it myself and you both know. Yeah, making a maze out of it. I mean, I'm like, what happened to just take you know shooting it yeah. out from the door and then down? No, seriously, we, we get like halfway up that ramp, and David Bowie and the Goblin Choir are <laughs> fucking dancing over there That's on what the right. I'm We're saying like, it's Pan's Labyrinth. Game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like when they were building it that day. There was they were two northern guys, so it's like, hey, we're here, the Belgian, bye, 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 and it's like, okay, whatever, cool, and um, so they're building it. They're cool guys, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to do. And mom, after they finish, my mom looks out the door and she went, oh my god. I went, what? She went, you won't believe the size of this ramp. So she gets me in my wheelchair so I can see it, and I was like, what the fuck did they use? Like. Two hundred thousand dollars worth of fucking money to spend on this ramp, like, cause that's what it looks like. It looks like you went all out for this ramp. That's how long this ramp is. It looks like. That ramp, that and what's worse is, is it's metal. It's it's yeah. metal, so in the summer, there's like a thousand <laughs> degrees and a glare coming off of this thing. So you're going up this thing, yeah, and you're like, it's, it's painted I, white. <laughs> like you have to put shades on, and that that the little black stripes under your eyes, like football players, just to be able to see you going up the goddamn thing. I'll tell you what: if you guys ever want to tan and you don't want to go to the sun, uh, suntan, uh, just the suntan bed, ramp. Come to my house. Stand both ramp for ten yeah, minutes. Just come to my house. Ten minutes is overkill. Ten minutes is way like overkill. If you hold your shorts right, you know, even your nether regions will get tan. Like it is that fucking bright, and I've and we've looked for shit to calm it down. There's nothing out there to calm the fucking brightness of that goddamn aluminum fucking ramp at all. And what's worse is you keep it kind of dark. You're like me. You don't like a lot of bright light, mm -hmm. and you go into the house and you're like fucking blind. <laughs> 
and the dogs are barking and they're trying so, to say hi and you're and you're in there and your eyes are trying to adjust and yeah and both so, of you are on the couch and you're like just waving in his general direction because you heard his voice because your eyes are closed <laughs> because you were fucking blind and you're like just where's your couch four paces to so, the left four paces forward there you go just sit down and then i've got to tell that, this like i need a nap i really I've, need a nap I got to tell you guys this before we go to break and do another song dedication. But when Nevermore first came to my house, I told her, I was like, Daisy is going to be very protective of me. She's like, not going to want you near me at all for a few minutes. And she was like, okay. So it was a bright, sunny day that day. She comes in. Oh, it was. Her glasses are dark as fuck like mine are because they're the transition shit. And she's already blinded because she looked at the sun in the fucking aluminum ramp, right? She comes in. The first thing that Daisy does is try to jump on her while she's barking. Not to hurt her or anything, but she just pushes on her a little bit. And (laughs) Nevermore is over there like, oh, oh no, no dogs, no dogs, not right now. I can't see. I'm blinded by the light. (laughs) Blinded by the light. (laughs) <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of. I was, it's not I was, even a joke. It's the truth. I get in there and I'm like, I just can't see you. I'm just going to look like a fucking doofus because I'm just going to stand. I had to stand at the door until my eyes adjust with the dogs going nuts because he kept saying, just sit down. They'll calm down. I'm like, I can't. I can't find the fucking couch. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here laughing my ass off and i'm like just and he's no help because you know he can't get up and he's just over there dying laughing he can't even talk to the dogs it was so (laughs) hilarious like it was one of those moments you want to talk you really do but you can't because she's getting ran over by a very protective (laughs) dog who loves you to death and you're just trying not to laugh at either one of them, but it's fucking hilarious because she can't see. She's literally blind for about, I don't know, two minutes. It was just the best thing ever. But we need to go to break. We'll come back on the other side. We'll continue this Memorial Day barracks party. We'll be back to the Memorial Day barracks talk right after this. TV Radio. TV Radio. Fun herders. How many times have you found things make your butt hurt because you're easily offended? Now, at last, somebody has done something about this condition. Butt Herder's Friend is on the market. A scientifically blended preparation manufactured especially for crybabies butts. When used daily, helps prevent bleeding, leakage, burning, promotes healing, and in general keeps your butt in tip-top condition for hurting when it's needed. You're too dead to DV Radio, where the shenanigans never end. Now, back to our show. And I was trying to untwist my mic because it's on my headset. We're back to DV Radio Memorial Day Barracks Party, May 27, 2019. I'm Boner One. We've also got Nevermore, Joaquin Watai, also known as the PTS Dog, and DV Like. How's everybody doing after that wonderful break? Much better. Much better, my bladder is flatter. I really <laughs> wanted. My <laughs> bladder is flatter. <laughs> That's a new motto. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really seriously, man. Next time I go into a store and and the clerk's like, "How you doing today?" And I'm, I'm going to say that my bladder is flatter. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> before, like, I don't care if we have to pre-record it because I don't have the equipment to change everything the way I want to voice-wise. But I really want to do a can mic esque show one time i don't care if it's 10 minutes long i want to do that so bad where we're doing the 20s talk and it sounds like we're talking into a fucking can i want to do that so fucking oh love, hell yeah see yeah i love the vod i know what you're talking deal. about see <laughs> right and, and and joaquin and and nevermore and oink all know my fascination with nor uh norar uh blood Whoa. bill i i Whoa. love it like i am obsessed with it it's so bad like, I have every single Three Stooges episode. It was a dark and stormy night, much like a dark I don't, I and don't stormy know, night. I, I don't know what it is. I honestly think I was born in the wrong fucking generation. But, like, I love that if shit. If he's going to do that voice, though, he's got to say titty sprinkles. 
Titty <laughs> sprinkles. <laughs> Hot shingles, you say? <laughs> <laughs> and the memorial of Danny Barracks. I've had just Texas. enough bourbon to start doing impressions. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining DVR. We, we got to go. leave It's now. on now, motherfuckers. <laughs> All right. So, on a serious note, every memorial, we take our shot right before we <laughs> go. We got a little started early this time because, you know, shit happens because, like I said, every year's different, every person's different. And it kind of slapped us both right in the face. But, you know, we're in a better place. And we got insane titty sprinkles, so fuck off. Well, you know, I blame Ron Ripley. Honestly, I get cheeseburger. Is it, is it a cheeseburger cracker? <laughs> so I blame, I blame Ron Ripley. It's, it's, it's his fucking fault. Really quick, really quick. Um, I don't know how many of you know about my my background, my, my family heritage. But um, I know Joaquin and Nevermore. Does it involve seen... banjos? <laughs> no, actually, it doesn't. Um, I know Nevermore and Joaquin have seen this on my timeline. Um, someone, uh, three people, I should say, that I know adamantly, without a doubt, shadow of the doubt, because they were very near to me. Um, Sieb Goins, uh, Private U.S. Army, World War I, uh, led from 1891 to 1964. My beautiful wonderful funny as hell grandfather pa bill william lee wood senior u.s marine corps world war ii believe it or not he and my great grandfather was in different wars but in the same conflicting wars and my uncle pike uh um, uncle jim pike jimmy lewis pike u.s army vietnam uh 1927 to 1997 and uncle jim 1943 to 2004 uh I think about them every year at this time. I don't go to cemeteries. I don't do funerals. I don't do hospitals anymore ever since my grandmother passed, but I will not do that. But to give you a little background on my family, my family literally goes back to Sir Andrew Wood, who was a Scot uh, Scotsman. He was a uh, Royal Scots Navy Admiral, and uh, he was described as the Scots Scotland's Nelson from King James the third to present day 2010 Iraq minus Desert Storm my family has literally been in every single war no matter what country my family was in um, I'm not wanting to take praise for that at all but I want to thank any one of my family members I know there's a couple of Navy men out there Air Force as well that was in my family um, thank you so much whether you're listening or you're passed on and somewhere else, thank you so much. And I'm glad that I could keep that uh, lineage going on when I was in Iraq from 2009 to 2010. Thank you so fucking much for being able to uh, say that we were a part of history in some way, shape, or form. But yes, uh, Sir Andrew Wood was an admiral, like I said, for the Royal Scots Navy, and he led King James III's. Uh, Royal Navy back in the day so that's going pretty far back I don't have anything proof wise other than an ancestral uh, background but I do know that that's how far back my lineage goes uh, do any of you here right it's... now know about your lineage as far as um, battles family anything like that it's kind of funny um, that uh, Scott's heritage in the southeastern united states is so strong uh i'm a direct descendant of william hooper nice whose father was a uh scottish uh a minister and emigrated to the united states and william hooper has to be the distinction of being the representative of the state of north carolina from the city of greensboro who signed the declaration of independence 1774 to 1970 or 1777 just so y'all know i know william hooper (laughs) william hooper i'm a direct descendant my great uncle bill my grandmother's brother uh direct descendant uh six times removed now from uh, william hooper who signed the declaration of independence which is kind of funny because on my birth father's side i'm a mescalero apache so you have two sides of a coin, one which brought independence to America and one which 
fought against the westward expansion of the white men. So right. I'm a my mom raised me. I never was raised as Native American or white or Hispanic. I was raised as a Heinz 57 because I literally on my on my grandfather's side, I uh, uh, his grandmother was named Wilhelmina Schweigman. And I'm German Jewish on grandfather's side. And it's wow. it, literally, if you want to take the, the melting pot, if you want to use that um, metaphor for the United States of America, I literally am a little bit of everything. Heinz motherfucking 57. And uh, it's, it's kind of funny that, but, but I think it's cool because even uh, Nevermore, her heritage is Scottish and they ended up in the southeast of the united states and I, I just think it's a small world when you oh, really start yeah. digging and looking back you know uh really quick joaquin you know as much about native american history as i do um Suratu, they were really prominent in north carolina as well correct who Suratu, i think it's s-a-r-a-t-u Suratu. i've honestly never even heard of that tribe well actually if you didn't know, <laughs> they're in the Mount Airy Museum, <laughs> um, historical museum, and um, we can't trace our Native American history back as far as uh, my family wants to because it got lost in translation. Say, you know, they, mine. The, there is no record prior to the 1950s. The, right. the church, the, the mission on the on the reservoir uh, reservation burned down. There's no mm -hmm. paperwork. I can't prove it unless you do a DNA test. And right. I don't care. It doesn't right. matter, you know? Right. Well, I was getting ready to say a lot of people try to tell me that I have, like, Cherokee um, descendant features and shit. Too, but honestly. No, no, Cherokee's too far. You're too far east right. to be Cherokee descendant. It's exactly. Thank you. And that's one thing that I try to bring up, too. Uh, Snafu actually said yes. So I, I believe he's talking about the Suratu. But mm -hmm. Suratu was very prominent in the. Um, area that I'm in, as well as my family uh, descended from after they moved from Scotland and Germany. Uh, just so you all know, I am honestly more Native American has heritage than African American, even though it's just over a percent. Yes, Marquis is my brother. Love your brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking Marquis. So, so, <laughs> I was hoping we'd hear his happy voice this evening. I really I know, was. I know. I didn't hear back from him. If anybody wants to yell at him, go yell at him, please. Go Marquis give Davis. Marquis shit for not showing up for the barracks party. For real. Yes. <laughs> all right, for so I can trace my family all the way back to the Norse and uh, Scottish Wars. So I'm half, well, not me personally, but yourself. the family's half Viking, half Scottish. Go fuck then yourself. it transfers <laughs> over to when the Scottish and Irish mixed, and then it transfers over to when the Indian, Irish, and Scottish mixed. So I'm a little, I, I'm pretty much a mutt. Um, I can't really trace <laughs> my my uh, Indian heritage because 95% of my family died on the Trail of Tears. <laughs> Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, let's see. My grandfather was uh, seventy percent Cherokee, and there's a couple of greats in there. But great, 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 great grandfather somewhere in there was full blooded Cherokee chief. Yeah, who was no, removed. It's, it's funny because my grandmother's mother's maiden name was Lafferty, and um, she's Irish. I mean, it's just you know that's the whole beauty of America, though. Yeah. Is the melting well, pot. Well, we really took quick. people from everywhere and we mashed them all together and we made one nation. Really quick. You know? Speaking of names, everybody thinks that I am a descendant of Woods, which there's one of me. That's why it's Wood. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm not, actually. It's two different families. Um, but funny story, I am related to both sides of the Goldens, E-N and I-N-G. There's a famous Golden in history. I can't remember exactly what William Golden. Can... There you go. William Golden. Yeah. I can't I can't remember what he done. Do you remember what Me he done? Me neither. Like... I just know the name. I'm like, Golding. Oh, William Golding. Right. Back in the day, <laughs> he, he done like something. pissed off, uh, pissed off, uh, 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 yeah. What's his name? Uh, uh, yep. uh, the, the, the prime minister. Well, not only that, not only that, 
there was like he, also, he got beheaded with an axe or something in England. Uh -huh. Well, William not Golding. only that, there was something that was invented by a Golding as well. But he is the one that started this separation. If you remember the Hatfields and McCoys, they separated, and there was a big ass conflict. Well, the Goldings decided to split because there was a big ass conflict between them and En and Ing. No matter where you're at in the fucking world, you're fucking related. So go fuck yourselves. You're related, even if you don't think you are. Tupper, Tupper so, in the comments. William happening. Golding wrote Lord of the Flies. Yes, there you go. That's there what you he go. does. Thank you, Thank Thumper. You, Thumper. We're idiots. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, brother. I was sitting here. I was like, he done something famous. Yeah, I got to tell my mom <laughs> because we've been trying to figure that out for the longest of time. Lord of the Lord Flies. Lord of the Flies. That's it. Yeah, I love that book, by the way. I need to make a diorama. Anyway, um, <laughs> point. Kill the pig. Kill the pig. <laughs> point. I like Sorry, your Sorry Mike. <laughs> ain't no thing. Ain't no thing. <laughs> point. Um, so we were far talk tonight, people have wanted to bite Oink, eat Oink, and now they want to kill Oink. I'm just waiting for somebody to chime in and right. say they're going to lick Oink. <laughs> right. Oink, we Thumper's were talk here, so that may happen. Bo Boogie will lick hey. Oink. <laughs> Oink, we were talking about our heritage as far as family and, and battles and anything. Do you have any um, recollection of anything that you've researched or anything of that nature as far as your family heritage or lineage? Whether it's battle related or not, war specific, whatever, do you have any regulation of how far back your family heritage goes? Regulation? Regulation. <laughs> well, like, see, I was recollection or speculation? <laughs> <laughs> or both. Regulation. <laughs> no, actually, uh, that was one of my uh, father's dying uh, wishes, was he was trying to research exactly where we came from. Um, he contacted a book company and looked up the last name. And of course it's all generic. You know, they don't actually know exactly where your family came from, you know, specifically, but uh, he was, he was trying to research that. And that kind of led me on the same thing. And I, I did the ancestry.com thing and, and spent the loads of money for one year, but uh, really didn't turn up a whole lot as well. And, um, you know, unfortunately I, I wish I knew more. I really did. I know my grandfather, he was uh, Army Air Corps before it was, you know, the Air Force. Uh, my old man joined the Army, and then, of course, I joined the Air Force. But, uh, no, I really I really wish I, I, I knew as, as far as where we came from. The little bit that that book explains that it was more Great Britain, Germany area uh, that the pig name came from. And, of course, it derived, you know, from pig farmers to, you know, different things. So, who knows? You know, I, I really wish I did know. Yeah, I, where I came from. I honestly wish that I was like Oink and could pinpoint every single moment of history where certain things took place and and get a nail down on every single thing for a fact, not just well, this may have been. I hate that. Um, I've watched I've watched a lot of Who Do You Think You Are. Love those shows. I've seen Judge Rinder. Uh, if you don't know who that is, you need to go watch them on YouTube. Uh, Paula Dean, um, just about every celebrity that's been on there. Yes, I know they hype it up, Martin Sheen, all that. But at the same time, I love how they do that. I hate Ancestry.com. You can go fuck yourself for how much you want to fucking charge me to put. <laughs> well, it you out. realize? Oh, it was a yeah. lot. Yeah. You yeah, realize so. Ancestry.com? Let's put our tinfoil hats on, yeah. kids. Ancestry.com yeah. is owned by the Mormon <laughs> Church, who believes that, that if you're uh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Each of your of your predecessors, that then you'll get into the heaven, and there's only four hundred thousand people who will get into heaven, and yeah, that's some nonsense, man. Let me tell you a story. So probably this is 2019, correct? I think so. I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what the that's what the little thing on the bottom right corner of my uh, computer monitor says. <laughs> yeah, because my mind's not all here. But um, not too long ago, um, I got a message on Ancestry.com, and I try to read them as much as possible. And I had this message from this television show, and they wanted to come and do a a interview with me and talk about one of my fourth cousins. I said, who is it? Well, we don't like to give out that information. I was like, okay, so who the fuck is the show for? I didn't say fuck. I was trying to be professional, trying to be nice. They tell me who the show is for. I do some research, and the show is online only. 
they've had two seasons, and I watched a couple of their seasons. Honestly, it looked like, um, what was that Survivor Great Chase thing? You guys remember that? That didn't last long, but they were like trying to run around the fucking town and do all this shit and not get voted off of the show. You guys remember that? Vaguely. I okay. never was into that kind of reality TV. Right. I hate that anyway. shit. So that's basically what this quote unquote family show was about. And I said, unless you are willing to, A, tell me who it is, B, provide me proof that this person is related to me, and C, not show me on air because I don't do video and I don't do pictures. I don't do it. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. And they were like, well, we would like to have your input on this person. I was like, okay, then give me some information. We can't do that until we record you and put you on the public forum. I was like, that's not happening. What? They tried to argue with me. I said, I'm not doing that. I said, that, first that's off. That's not how this works. That's that's not how any of this works. Right. I said, first off, I do something that I don't want my, you know, identity out there because I don't want fame. That's not what I do. And they tried to argue the fact that this wasn't fame. I was like, yes, it is. Yes, it fucking is. You're trying to put me on a platform and put me in the spotlight. I don't want that shit. And it went back like 10 emails. I'm not joking. I had to delete my Yahoo email account and restart the same one over again. That's how bad it got because they would not stop. I was like, this what? is ridiculous. Like, I had to completely start over my ancestry profile because I. This, it, it ladies was and bad. gentlemen, is the definition of zealotry. <laughs> right. All they wanted was a buck, and they wanted a story, and they found out that I'm disabled, my life. I don't know how the fuck these assholes found this shit out. I'd really like to know the motherfucking producer behind this show. And if you're listening, you're a piece of shit, and I'd like to fucking slap you in the balls with a like spiked, a rusty iron. You. Like golf, <laughs> foxtrot, Yankee, motherfucker. Right, and I told my mom well, about all this. That to be the name of my new clan on Durango. If anybody <laughs> can play Durango West server with me, because I'm yeah. kind of all alone. Well, I told my mom. And I made a clan. clan because it's go fuck yourself clan. And I'm waiting for people to catch on that I'm being actually pretty rude. <laughs> Well, I told my mom about this email that I got, and she was like, I don't like it. I was like, I don't either. We've went almost 12 emails, and they still haven't given an ounce of information. I said, they don't want anything but a story, something that they can actually use in one of their teasers to say and, on the next episode. And try episode. to leverage for fucking money. Right, yeah. right. And they were Snafu, like... Snafu, well, I'm going to point something out. Snafu, Snafu has a, a native background. Mm -hmm. And his his great grandma, I believe, yes, his great grandma, is has written down the family history. Bro, you have no idea how rare that is. Yeah, literally the the only reason I know that I'm Mescalero is because it's been passed down through the family. There are literally there are no records. The only thing m the the root of my family is in El Paso, Texas, and <clears throat> to to anybody else we're just fucking mexicans right yeah but we did not cross the border the border crossed us during the mexican american war <laughs> oh <laughs> that's not God. a joke that's not like, a joke that's no, literally no. how it happened just, it wasn't that's where it. we lived <laughs> and then the border got made with texas after the war we right we and we were stuck on the american side wait a minute it's wait a minute everybody stop it. Everybody you know? stop. Everybody report him. He's illegal. <laughs> quick. <laughs> wait, wait. Really quick. Really quick. Illegal from motherfucking 1873, <laughs> bitches. Really quick. Joaquin, I need you to say we didn't cross the border. The border crossed us by yourself right now. We didn't cross the border. The border crossed us. <laughs> I am actually going to use that in something. Use very it. Soon. Use that shit because to, it's like... true. And there's, there's the Mescalero tribe, literally, the Mescalero tribe. We did not come north from Mexico. Stop yelling. Texas, Texas <laughs> took our, our, our land away from us. Uh, Snafu, if you saw him in person, well, I, you have seen him in person, if I'm not. Yeah. But he, he does, when he tans, he does look yeah. Mexican. Yeah. But what's funny is we were in Oregon, and we went to this authentic Mexican place where they freaking spoke Spanish. And what had me cracking up is this 
little old lady comes out of the kitchen and starts talking to him in Spanish. <laughs> well, he can't speak a lick of fucking Spanish, but and I can. And I'm sitting there going, okay. they get. Okay. Look, <laughs> look, my my freaking background is Viking and Anglo-Saxon. I'm as white as you get. Born red hair, freckles, you name it. And this lady literally looks at me with so much disdain. And she mumbled something about smart ass white girl. And I'm just sitting there going, great. Good thing I can see into the kitchen. She was so fucking offended that the Mexican couldn't speak Spanish. And the white girl was over there. I was like walking away from the table. How dare he bury me in a white girl? And I'm sitting there going, racist. What, you asshole? This, this fucking beaner speaks German. Thank you very much. I was about to say the only three languages, four languages I know is a little bit of rough German because I taught myself. A little bit of Spanish, which is That's what slowly, she said. <laughs> which is slowly <laughs> leaving me. Horrible fucking English, and even worse, redneck English. Like that's all I know. <laughs> Both speaks bad English and badder English. <laughs> like that's, that's it. But now, what he and I will make jokes back and forth. If people heard us, he wouldn't be labeled racist. Just me because I'm the white one. But Let's fuck up, white girl. <laughs> he will like he will make something, and I'll be like, um, "Is that hot?" And he's like, "White people hot or my hot?" And I'm like, <laughs> hot. And, he, "And if he says no, it, yes, then I'm like, no, I ain't even eating that." Or we'll pass it back. But the biggest thing is, I make fun of him and try to get him to talk like a cholo all the fucking time because when he does it, it cracks me up. What are they? What are they, Holmes? <laughs> If people heard us, like I said, um, I would be labeled a racist, <laughs> handicapped, <laughs> motherfucker. That's all I can say. If, if people heard our banter in the household, they would think this is the most racist motherfucking house in the fucking planet. Oh, you should see some of our conversations. Like, you guys would think we're straight up bigot, racist, homosexual motherfuckers. Like, it gets that bad sometimes. I'm not even joking. Like, really. Because right. you know why? There is no color except green or blue. You <laughs> or, know, or there red. is no color. Or, or, or wait, red. wait, 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 Joaquin. Unless you're marine, and then it's red and yellow. We know what the yellow. Well, it's going to okay. say we all bleed red. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. We all bleed red. There is no fucking color in the in the military. It doesn't exist. Like Arlie Ermy said, great line from from Full Metal Jacket. You are all equally worthless. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. To add on to what Arlie Army said one time, he said, I don't care if you've got a tattoo on your throat or a tattoo in the middle of your face. If you're military and that tattoo is signifying some military honor, you are probably the best and most American, true American there is because you decided to get something tattooed on your body permanently for the rest of your life he actually said that not verbatim but the, he was asked he was asked about tattoos and how he felt about you know um the regulations for uh uh allowing people in with neck tattoos and arm tattoos i think me oh, and you talked God. about that one time joaquin and they tried I, was, I was active duty during that whole during the navy yeah. and marine corps whole tattoo uproar yeah, yeah. And there were guys that were grandfathered in because they were already active duty and had sleeves and you couldn't get a sleeve anymore. My first tattoo was above the bottom line of mm -hmm. my whites so that you couldn't see it because yeah. that was the regulation at the time. Yeah. And what bullshit. There were some motherfuckers on my ship who were fucking sleeves because they were grandfathered. My fucking command master chief had sleeves his neck like you could see at the at the top of his t-shirt that yeah. there were tattoos his whole chest was covered and let me tell you what there was nobody who who bled more red white and blue than that cmc than that master chief yeah it oh, does when i was when i was in um they did a three tattoo minimum and yeah we were grandfathered in but they were offering free tattoo removal to get you down to the uh, three tattoo minimum, Yay. and I'm like, not gonna happen. I'm Yay. Kidding. I was, I was, I was actually, I was actually at the NCO Academy, and they had a guy that had the full sleeves and all that shit going on, and and the uh, uh, calves tattooed and everything else, and they actually made him run in the full Air Force PT gear in Texas, mind you, you know, 
in the fucking heat to cover his he, tattoos to cover his fucking tattoos yep. oh yeah. my yeah. god air force was really bad about that um i had like i said i had all of mine before the rules came in um but they got so serious about it that the ones that had them like below their sleeves and stuff mm-hmm. were always, and I was in Louisiana, I was stationed in Louisiana. They'd make them wear their sleeves down and yep. we're all sitting there going, how are you not dying? And lucky for me, I put them, the ones that I had while I was in the service, they were all where no matter what gear I was in, what I was wearing, you couldn't see them. So no questions asked except for the one on my leg. And at one point we were doing something and the big wigs were there and they actually made me wear a fucking ACE bandage around my calf Yeah, because I was wearing PT shorts and they were showing PT and they made me wear an ACE bandage around my calf so the big wigs wouldn't freak out. Even though I was grandfathered in yep. because I refused. That's gayer than a fucking football bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, funny, you know what the funny thing was? Is a guy that, 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 that they made it wear all that uh, Air Force PT gear. He actually was a tattoo artist and brought his stuff up uh, from his other base and gave about six guys fucking tattoos. I was one of them. So, <laughs> fuck you, Air Force. <laughs> Thumper, Thumper in the chat goes, that, that Master Chief was a salt dog. Thumper, you have no idea. He was one of those command master chiefs that was all gold, and his entire bottom of his left sleeve was gold. This guy had been in for 743 years. <laughs> he, he went back to fucking square square rigged ships, and and let me tell you, you think that guy was a salt dog? You may have. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should have waited and pissed him off. Let me tell you about Salty. <laughs> really that quick. was one hell of a Master Chief. <laughs> really quick. I know we're all having fun. We're having memories out the ass for here on uh, May 27, 2019. For the Memorial Day Barracks Party, we have two more song dedications that I'd like to get in before we end the show. Um, I, like I said, I wanted to get all the song requests and dedications in before we end the show and two hours was just not enough i didn't prepare it for ron ripley because he got me out of nowhere that nobody gig. can prepare for ron ripley ron ripley yeah. takes adhd to a whole new level you everybody can it to a friend no fuck it send it to yourself again uh, yeah, these uh, these other three these other three can attest the itinerary states 11 o'clock uh well or 10 o'clock yeah, that wasn't happening at all with Ron Ripley on. But we're going to go to break. We've got two more song dedications. We love you, Ron. <laughs> we're sorry that everybody that's listening to this on podcast can't hear that. We are very sorry. Our license does not allow for that. We don't have the millions of dollars. If you go to Patreon and become a DV Radio patron, maybe one of these, I don't know, decades, lifetimes, we can afford a fucking license to have our music played during podcasts, but we'll be back to the Memorial Day Barracks Party right after this. I see a little bit of foreskin. Because this is how it is. Mm, yes. Good thing we didn't say you better tune in. This is one for the record books. You don't want to miss it. We'll talk quietly amongst ourselves. This is fucking fantastic. On DV Radio. You ready for some more fuckery and shenanigans, assholes? We're back with DV Radio. And just so Joaquin Watai knows, my mic is open because you have to listen to the fucking shit that I'm playing. We're back to Memorial Day Barracks Party, May 27, 2019. If you didn't hear before, we had the break. DVRadio.net, WDVR. I'm Bonerwood. We've got still with us Oink, Nevermore, and PTS Dog, Joaquin Watai. So how has everybody done this actually three hours now that I'm realizing eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, three hours uh, how's everybody doing? You raise doing your hand, good. Joaquin. You can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. That was hey look, hey, look. Bo was asking for for songs, and I gave him that song. Caroline Spine is the name of the band, and the name of the song is Sullivan. And he's like, "Do you want credit?" I'm like, "No, I don't want credit. I didn't write the fucking song, but I requested that song. I love that song." And in to understand, I graduated. Oink. You'll you'll know this. I graduated class in 1990 from Chugiak High School. Huh? huh? And um, <laughs> they literally just said, you can go and uh, <laughs> and I was in college, and I was a DJ in college, and then in 1996 I joined the Navy, and I had the opportunity because I was a journalist in the Navy to be a DJ in the Navy, and so I had that period of time, that wonderful period of time from 1990 to 
well, rough, well, to, to 2003, really, where I was shipboard. And uh, no, not 2003, 2006, 2006, where I was a DJ. 1990 to 2006, that wonderful musical time when grunge happened, Nirvana happened, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, uh, Mother Love Bone, all these bands. And this one band, Caroline Spine, did a song about the Sullivan Brothers and Blue, and, and Blue Star to Gold Star Mothers. And that song, I don't know why that song speaks to me so much, except it's about the Navy. And it's about the Sullivan Act, which was the five brothers were killed on the same ship. One ship, the ship was sunk, and the Sullivan brothers were killed. And uh, they came out with the act. And they actually did one of the greatest war movies ever made, was dedicated to the, to the fact of the Sullivan Act, which was, of course, saving Private Ryan. After the Sullivans were killed, the Department of the Army, well, the Department of Defense, which was at the time the Department of War, decided that, look, if you're related, if you're brothers, you can't be in the same unit because all five brothers said, we stick together. And they were on the same ship and they were all killed when that ship was sunk. And so that's the whole basis of the movie Saving Private Ryan, probably one of the best war movies I've seen. I mean, it's fantastic. And I just, that song, that, that is my Memorial Day go-to is Sullivan by Sarah, by Caroline Spine. Cause it's Navy, but it's all military and laws were changed and blue star moms and gold marks, gold star moms. It's all there. Well, it's, I do, I do have a core role with Saving Private Ryan as being the best because it's a toss up between We Were Soldiers, Saving Private Ryan. Oh. Oh, Hurt. you had Amen. to throw We Were Soldiers Amen. in there, you bastard! Hurt Locker, I, I, and there's... I, I gotta say, yeah, yeah. That's, that we is were... a valid argument. I, yeah. That's a valid... That's valid, so, Bo. That is a so, valid argument. So, it's between Saving Private Ryan, We Were Soldiers, Hurt Locker, and there's one more that I cannot, for the life of me, say... Wait, remember wait, the name did of. you fucking say Hurt Locker? No, I said Hurt Locker. Gay. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> What I don't like about Hurt Locker is the way they portray EOD as straight up heroes because they were on my cop and they can go fuck <laughs> themselves. Um, <laughs> fucking assholes stayed in the goddamn shoes the entire fucking time. Went out on the fucking, you know, hotline, as I call it, once. And it was for nothing. I mean, literally nothing. They went to a PX. That's what they done. That's why they went on a fucking hot trail. That's it. <laughs> like, that was it. That's why they went on a fucking convoy. That's why they went to go to the fucking PX. We had a PX on our cop, and they had to go off our cop to go to a PX. We had everything. Anyway, um, so if you three, Joaquin, Oink, and Nevermore, will read Zoom chat, uh, and let me know your 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 thoughts in Zoom chat, I'll go on. I just did. That. I, I see that. <laughs> um, but um. Yes, this is because it ain't me. It ain't me. I know fortunate son. No, put, put your hand down. God damn it! Your time is over. It's my I can't, time. How do I put my hand down? I don't oh, know. I can uh, click that shit. Really? Okay. <laughs> so, That's so cool. Oh my God, this is what happens yeah. when you Here's get someone that Zoom. writes. This is what <laughs> happens when you get someone that writes on your show. They they they're long fucking win. Um. Anyway. Um. Yes. Uh, we have used six of that shit for like hours one night. It was no no joke. Yeah. yeah. So so for everyone listening, whether you're live or on podcast, uh, during this week or later on, this is our Memorial Day barracks party. I don't want you. If you're thinking that we forgot about what this day is about, we did not. This is our no. way of observing it. This is the way we celebrate it. We try to look at the great times for those that we yep. loved. Um, yep. I cried Friday. I want to cry tonight. I didn't play sitting in a bar for a reason. Uh, it's probably the first year I've not played it. I listened to it Friday, and I fucking cried my eyes out. I can't do it right now. I don't want to cry on air. I hate crying. <laughs> not because I'm manly, not because I'm that strong, but because... I don't want anyone seeing me crying. I, I've never liked it. I don't like my mom seeing me crying. That's how much nope. I hate it. That being said, 
<clears throat> we know what Memorial Day is. We want you all, men, women, brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, civilians, caregivers, I don't care who you are. If you're listening to us right now, observe it the way you want. Fuck the world. Observe it the way you want. If you want to have a good time and cook out and remember your brothers and sisters the way they were in the good times, do it. If you want to cry or, or light a candle or pour a drink and leave it set until the next day, do it. I don't care how you observe it. But in one way, shape, or form, observe it to some extent. Whether you take five mm -hmm. minutes or five seconds out of your Memorial Day, observe it. That's all I ask. That's all I'll ever ask. We all have our ways of mourning, grieving, and celebrating. This is the way we, we do that. So, before we end the show, Nevermore, what would you like to say tonight before we end the show? Joaquin, what would you muted. like to say? You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoopsie. Whoopsie. Push okay. the fucking button. I actually that thought she was. I, fucking I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Me and her was talking about pissing. So I thought she went and pissed. That's why I went to Uncle Joaquin. Piss. I was, had to go again. Bourbon. But anyway, I guess I would say be safe, fuckers. Don't get your dick caught in the ceiling fan. Reach out if you need to, and yes. don't put your dick in crazy, because then crazy stalks you, okay? They exactly. do. With that, um, have a blessed whatever, however you want to celebrate the remaining of Memorial Day, but don't get in your head, fuckers. It ain't, it, that's not what they would want anyway, so. Yep. Um, oink, yourself, anything to end Memorial Day barracks party? Hey, just two guys I served with, uh, Bass Sergeant Jerome Jordy, a guy I served with there in Germany who had a stroke behind the wheel there on the Autobahn, believe it or not. The guy was luckily there with him, grabbed him, threw him out of the, <laughs> threw him out of the driver's seat. Uh, for that, for a long time, it's, you know, he never drove. He got to Beale Air Force Base, his next assignment, uh, decided he was okay, decided to drive again, and actually hit a tree and passed away. So, memory to him. Memory to uh, Senior Airman Zane Montana, a guy I served with on active duty. He just got here to Elmendorf, and, uh, you know, shortly after that, I retired. Came back as a civilian. He was still here and became one of the 22. So, mm. uh, those two guys, you know, uh, Godspeed, brothers. We're here with you. Well, we've, we miss you. And uh, for all those that are out there listening, you know, it's not a great time, but if you need help, reach out. We're here for you. Exactly. Joaquin, yourself. Senior Chief Doug Sheridan, I don't know why you wait on my wait on me today. I really don't. But uh, you were one of the good ones. And um, honestly, there's three men who, if they picked up the phone today and called me and said, hey, I need your help, I'd drop everything and go. And you were one of them. And thank you. Thank you for showing me what a leader should be instead of how not to be a leader. Thank you. Well said. Um, I've, I've spoke about Ken Carl a few times during these things. Uh, one I've, I don't think I've ever spoke about is Big Dick Farrell. Uh, there's a reason we called him Big Dick. It's an inside joke between those that's um, PM4L. Uh, if you don't know what PM4L is then you're not one of them uh, it's tattooed on all of us um so feral i don't want to say what happened to him but not long after we got back he he died uh <laughs> probably one of the craziest no give shits no fuck given 27 introducing to myself motherfucker out there um if you've never seen Full Metal Jacket and seen this shit written on people's helmets, uh, you don't understand Big Dick Farrell. Uh, that was written on his uh, cat eyes. Uh, Ken, I love you, brother. Fucking love you. Uh, to give you a little insight on how close Ken and I were, every Friday, I don't care what was going on, every Friday at the hookah bar, we had a hookah bar on our cop, believe it or not, uh, we would buy a cigar and uh, smoke a hookah. And if you're from the VA listening to me, I don't really give a shit. Uh, that was a time <laughs> that, you know, I was inhaling shit from Iraq that would never fucking touch me. So a cigar and a hookah, that's not going to kill me. 
but we would take turns every Friday, and he would buy a cigar and a hookah, and I would buy a cigar and a hookah, and we we drink some chai every single Friday from May until February 2010. And I love you, brother. I fucking love you. Miss you every fucking day. There's days I wish I could talk to you. Because that son of a bitch, whether you had a bad day or not, he could make your ass laugh and had the driest sense of humor I've ever seen. So, I love you, Ken. Love you, Big Dick Farrell. Any of PM4Ls listening, we love you. We miss you even more. Um... Memorial Day, Barracks Talk. Sorry we're ending on such a sad note, <laughs> but I'm thinking of the great times, honestly. For DB6. Yep. Uh, look, you know, like I said earlier, we are all family. So yes. if you ever need anything, reach out. Yep. For uh, DB6, Google and Recoil, and Marquis Davis, who could not be with us tonight because they had other obligations. Wait, 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 wait. Bo, Nevermore has, has one more thing to add. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. Just yep. takes yep. a little bit to get the words out. I just want to say I love you, Jen. That's about all I can manage. We're all human. We all have our experiences. Don't let this ruin your night, everybody. Please think of the great memories. That's what they want you to do. They want you to laugh. They want you to have a good time. All right. So, again, for everybody that's unable to be with us and see us smiling and laughing at their shenanigans and their assholishness and their big dicks for DV6. <laughs> and Google. fuck you, Ron Ripley, you yeah. son of a bitch. I sent the yeah. wrong coffee in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking again. Ron Ripley. Ron that's motherfucking Ripley. <laughs> for, for Ron oh, motherfucking yeah. Ripley. God damn it, let me finish this goddamn show. So I don't cry on air. <laughs> For DB6, Recoil, Google, Marky Davis, and all of you that cannot be with us tonight to share in this great fucking moment. We love you. This has been the Memorial Day Barracks Party right here on dvradio.net, Mar- uh, May 27th, 2019. I'm Boner Wood. You've got Nevermore, PTS Dog, also known as Joaquin Latai, and Oink. And hopefully Ron Ripley kills it at the comedy store in Hollywood until this Saturday with Barracks Talk. Bye bye. We're gonna end tonight's show with none other than Let Me Bring It Up. Credence Clearwater Revival's uh Fortunate Son. Um is something that D V six probably would have made me play and I'm not going to not play it because he's had me play it probably every year in some way, shape, or form. We will end with the uh, Barrack Talk outro, as we always do. But, please, keep safe, looking out for each other. Uh, if you need anything, reach out to dvbarracks.com, which is the DV farm where you can be completely anonymous, dysfunctional veterans on Facebook, Twitter, DV underscore DV radio. I cannot reply to everything, but I try to as much as possible. Again, until... This Saturday at Barracks Talk. Bye bye. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. I've not hit the quit broadcasting thing yet, so if anybody has anything to say before I do, you better say it. Hurry up. Hurry up. Poop. Anybody else? Let's go. Penis. Anybody else? Let's go. Let's go. All right, you're the last one. Let's Penis. go. Penis. Vagina. 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 You can't steal it. You can't steal I it. I got sand wait, up wait, in wait, my wait. vagina. Wait, wait, wait. You can't steal it. Penis. Good night, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> Fucksicles. Bye bye. All right, we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. That, that, that's not wrong with us. I guess that's okay. No, boys, just ain't right. Right. I needed that so much. I was thinking about Ken so hard all weekend. I oh, that. shit. That great. That's exactly Love you, how, man. Dude, now I love I you gotta, all. I'm not gotta, joking. If y'all that's can't ex- tell, he's probably drunk by now. And now Drunker I than a motherfucking skunk and don't give a fucking shit. Oh, I could tell 
when I don't know about he would 20, shut up. <laughs> minutes, I was about to say I don't know about twenty minutes into the show he would not shut the fuck up every time I'd say what uh so uh what uh, 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 uh I was like God damn it let me get a word in edgewise somewhere please dude holy fuck and then when he starts telling stories the drunker he gets the longer the stories get I'm like dude writers suck man just get to the point I'm ADHD I can only I only hear the first two minutes of your story oh my god. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot to tell Ooh. everybody to hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 hydrate wait, wait. and take aspirin, bitches! Wait, wait. All right, so we're not recording this, but you're probably listening to us on the player. We forgot to tell everybody to hydrate that's drinking alcohol. We totally forgot alcohol. If you don't know what alcohol is, well, it's the shit that makes your brain go, woohoo! Get some of that good old stuff, Gatorade, and make it down our gators. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we love you, fuckers. Good night. <laughs> bye bye. Oh my god. <laughs>